Welcome to What We Into. I'm your host, Lawrence Dial. And I'm your boy, Rob Carmen Robinson. We are live <laughs> at San Diego Comic Con here on the floor at booth 69420. Don't say that. Because that just makes me sad. Because we actually can't be at Comic Con. Yeah, but, we are, uh, we're here. We're here on the floor. No, let's. Improv Master. Uh, no, Come who, on. Who, me? Yeah. That, never that. that Sir, was, <laughs> Batman. That, that was never my... <laughs> Val Kilmer's Batman. Batman. Uh, return, no. What was Val? Val Kilmer's Batman. Batman Forever. Please step off the booth. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, Tom, San Diego was uh, the Mecca. The, the Mecca. Comic-Con yeah. was uh, what, last week. Yeah. Is it over now? I yeah. thought it was this yeah. week. No. It was this week. Not, no. It, it was this it week. It was this past week. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. Well, today's <laughs> today's Friday. Today we recording. Being... But it was also, it started Tuesday, I think. I think it started, yeah. yeah Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Well, which was the 20-something? Yeah. But uh, I guess there was actually another con a couple, last week con! called Blurred Con. Um, and that, what? oh, yeah, yeah. Huh? Blurred Con was uh, the week before, and then Comic Con. I think that was kind of interesting that they had them stacked like that. And I wonder if I wonder if there were a lot of like blurred con people who ended up going just basically left blurred con and went right over to uh, Comic Con. Hey, explain to my parents and Jeff Galfer what blurred con is. Uh, I won't explain shit for, to Jeff Galfer because <laughs> he has Google like everybody else. But mom and dad have been vacaying like crazy, yeah. so they probably aren't close to. Uh, um, they're in the computer. Azores right now. No, actually, I think they're on Cape Cod right now. Oh, really? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I know what your family's doing. You don't even because I'm off social media, <laughs> which means I have no connection to anyone in my life. That's that's unfortunate. That's that's true. Is that? <clears throat> but blurred con is um, well. The term blurred is basically an amalgamation of the of two words, black and nerd. The rarest of nerds. R- not at all. <laughs> but apparent. See, I was. See the thing is, Blurred Con is is pretty new to the, the rarest of bl- wait, wait, it's, it's, it's not the, it's the rarest of something. Wait, Blurred Con? No, <laughs> the rarest of cons. It, it is the rarest of cons because there it's brand new. Um, but it made me think that here here is a con that is completely um, came to be because of the toxic and often negative uh, um, uh, uh, connotations. Con- well, not connotations, but a negative. Uh, like if you're a black cosplayer, you get a lot more flack in the mainstream cosplay world. Like define flack. Like oh, um, like say say I'm a, I'm a I'm a black cosplayer and I want to cosplay somebody that's Batman. Let, let's say let's just for instance, I, you can't I, do that though. Why not? Because because Batman's white. Oh, is he though? It's true. But this is cosplay. You're saying that he's black and he's putting white face on every time. No, for no. Every... I'm saying that we had. <laughs> I'm saying that Blurred Con came out of the fact that people would have conversations like this know, in, the, in the in the mainstream, <laughs> and so they they had to create their own con just to be like, look, it's a safe space. We're gonna. It's, it, and it's just the crazy thing. Is, it's just like a regular con, except there's. <laughs> it's a safe. Space. It's a safe space for black people to enjoy so, their nerd shit. I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's it's sad, but it's sad that that has to happen. No, it is sad, bro. Yeah. It is no, no it is no, most but, definitely sad. I, well, it's not sad that it exists. No, it's not sad that it exists. Or but maybe it's, it is. It's, I don't it's, know. It's sad that it had to exist. Okay, like it could. It's sad that it like we just couldn't all get along with our with our nerd shit. Like, right. <laughs> if you if if I wanted to be Blade at San Diego San Diego Comic Con uh, 2020, I'm sh- I'll bet money there are at least four or five white blades running around San Diego right. Comic Con in blackface. Oh no, I don't think I, I look. If, <laughs> if you're a cosplayer and that's how you want to get down, fine. Isn't but it, you have to understand, in the same way, like if you use the, the N word, there are repercussions for that kind of shit. I'm just trying to figure out if there is. Not that I want to, because that sounds like a nightmare <laughs> you, to me. It sounds like you you need a documentary film team to follow you around as Blade. Uh, in blackface. I feel like this came up <laughs> once. I feel like a Japanese cosplayer put on blackface for really? something, Mm-mm. and there was a big debate about it. And depending but, on where you fell, I, I, it's it's interesting because there there are some uh, Japanese anime that kind of crosses the line. There's a character in Dragon Ball, oh sure, who is Mr. Popo, who is c- completely a rip off of like the uh, <clears throat> like the a caricature of what like black people what 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 the, what the mainstream white media used to make black people look like in newspapers right? and shit. Oh like, yeah, like the completely black face, giant white eyes, and red you know like. Yeah. Anime's been all about that. Anime's been about that for a number of years. Um, And I remember watching as a kid and being like, Hmm. I feel like I feel I feel like I should feel a ways about that. Mm -hmm. And he's a servant. Yeah. Uh, Well I've been playing I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy VII and Barrett, you know, 
the black guy with the gun. Right. His, right. his language is very, very like, this is what a Japanese person thinks, thinks a black person urban, sounds like. Yeah. Right. Black male sounds like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't, I, I mean, maybe it's offensive, maybe it's not. It's not like. But Barrett, like Barrett's language? I, yeah. I'm, I mean, maybe, but I, I don't know. Anyway, it's let's. It's not like he's like, hey, let's get some like fried chicken. <laughs> let's get some fried chicken, then yeah, I'm going to bring some watermelon where's over. Where's the chitlins? It's no, not that no, shit. It's, it's not as overt as <laughs> that. It's a little more <laughs> yeah. subtle. Yeah. It's a little more like, hmm, hmm. that's questionable. <laughs> this is a fictional world. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> My baby's in the back seat, reading a magazine. I'm in the front seat, looking up a dirty skin. But, uh, yeah, Comic-Con, man. Yeah, Comic-Con. We got trailers. We got... Tons of trailers. Reveals. Tons of announcements. Tons of reveals. We got uh, everything Marvel's doing for the next 15 years. Well, it, well at least the next... Fa- yeah, well, I guess it would be probably 10 years worth of movies that we, we're going to see. We got TV. We got one thing from DC. <laughs> Hey, did you talk to your, you talk to cousin Dave while he was out there? Cause yes. He, uh, so my cousin Dave Korea, I, I, it's over now, and I, I think the booth was like fifty five oh five, something like what? It's over now. So, anyways, he ended up getting. I, did I send you that picture? I th- I don't know how it works. I got to talk to him, but he ended up getting a cover of Heavy Metal magazine. Wait, what? Do you know Heavy Metal magazine? Yeah, of course I know Heavy Metal. So magazine. he's he, remember that painting that I showed you the picture of his art uh-huh. that he sent me. Uh huh. The one of the floating city, basically yeah. the Zalem type city. Uh huh. Uh, but spookier. That's going to be on the cover of Heavy Metal Magazine. No shit. They, oh, you saying he got the cover of yes. Heavy Metal Magazine? Yeah. I don't know. Wow. I, I, I have a suspicion that Heavy Metal <laughs> Magazine was going around looking at different artists and saying, we're going to do a Comic-Con issue, and we're going to pick the best you know, art that we found oh, at Comic Con, and, and Dave, they picked Dave, and he got one of his. Yo, yeah, shout so out to Dave, yo, that's what's up. What do they call it? Variants. So I think it's yeah, going to have like yeah. variant covers. So there'll be there'll be a number of different covers that yeah. they were that they do for this Comic Con issue. Oh, I have I have some heavy metal <coughs> magazines over here somewhere. Well, I, I mean, you know, if, heavy if, metal. Yeah, stuff. I, yeah, I know. You've heavy been metal. reading heavy metal. Heavy metal's been around for it's a been long a, time. It's been around since the movie. To me, that's like. A huge, huge, huge success. I mean, that like is... you've made it. Yeah. Maybe not financially. The cover of heavy metal is... is that's, that's huge. Yeah. That's huge. Because, I mean, it's... Like you said, heavy metal's been around since forever. I mean, it's probably been around since the first uh, Comic-Con. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's one of the few... <clears throat> it, like, unfortunately, like Mad Magazine that, that went belly up this year. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that's... Those appears. You know, Mad and Heavy Metal were, I think, around the same publishing time when they came out that makes me really sad about mad magazine me too yeah me fucking too that, i feel that was like they thing. just screwed it up I, I i think i think in the i think in this day and age it, it was kind of inevitable um especially with like mad dealt with a lot of like political satire it, it was basically a, a satirical cartoon magazine right. i think with the uh, with the internet and people just aren't buying like you know you know the novelty of having a Mad Magazine and then folding that cover sure. to do those, you know how it had those those uh, those pictures that you would fold the cover yeah. and then it would do something else. There's no real need or desire, I think, for that. The only people that really would remember and enjoy that shit would be us. Yeah, and, well, and, my, and my parents, right. and my dad, because him him and his uh, his brothers Doug and Bill, they used to collect them, Ooh. or used, at least used to buy them. And there was a whole stack of like old old comics, mm-hmm. you know, like Nam, whatever that was, and those mm-hmm. Spider Man, some really old Sergeant ones. Rock. They were in terrible condition, mm-hmm. but every every time we'd go visit my grandmother, we'd have this box of comics that we'd go through, and there were Mad magazines in there. Mm-hmm. And so we never got like the the political jokes that, that were being made at the right. time, but, but like, they was, were but still was, super like, boobs. Like, yeah, yeah. Mad, Mad, I think was one of the first like uh, comics that I, I saw boobs in. Yeah, you know, granted they were cartoon boobs, and yeah. like it was like a, a dude chasing a woman around like the, the edge of the page. Do you remember how they used to draw? Yes. Some of the cartoons would be like little, little in yeah. the in the in the edges yeah. of the page, uh, the margins of the pages. Yeah. So it's just sad. I feel like they, yeah. they could have had an online presence. I think so too. I, they, I don't think they needed to fold the, like completely to shut down publication. No. I think it could have moved to an online uh, media yeah. where you know you could get it um, like everything else. They could have had a TV show. I, yeah, well, well they Mad did. TV. Mad, yeah, Mad yeah. TV. Mad but they TV could was have, born they, out of that. I don't know if it. They could have formatted that differently. Yeah. They could have done like a Daily <laughs> yeah. Show style Mad thing. Yeah, and then it could have been topical and because Mad Mad Magazine was always political. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, that's sad. Uh, Cousin Dave also at Comic Con ended up stepping onto an elevator and meeting Kevin Smith. No shit. And so he sent me a picture of him and Kevin Smith. So it sounds like he had a great time. Dude, I I long for the day where I can go to Comic Comic Con is my mecca because I've been to a few cons. I've yeah. been to the the New York Comic Con here a couple years ago. Actually, twice. 
I went twice back to back years. Yeah. Um, um, and it's awesome. I'd yeah. never been before. I, I mean, I, my first con, I was like 30 some odd years old. Yeah. And it's, it's so amazing. Like all these like minded people sharing a love of this, you know, these things all kind of meet in this one place. It, it, it's amazing. Yeah. I highly recommend it. And, and I, I was at the Javits Center for the New York Comic Con. Right. I've been there a few times. Yeah, I, I can't imagine what the San Diego Comic Con must be like. It's it, got to be like three times as big. Three times big, is, is big yeah. you know? And the Javits uh, Center was huge. Yeah. Well, we're, we're here right now and we can look around. The problem is when you pick booth uh, 69420, <laughs> you're actually so far away from the action that it's quiet here. <laughs> There's a little murmur way up in the day. We, gotta, we have to like basically walk about three miles to get to the other booths. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I wish that were the, the case. Oh, um, it, I really is the, it is the case. I really wish. You're that <laughs> improv guy who says no. Yeah, I am that improv guy who says no. <laughs> no. No. This is supposed to be the running gag for the whole episode. No. No. <laughs> no. No. Nobody's buying that. Uh, nobody's buying Let's that. jump into some trailers that were released at Comic-Con. There's also some other stuff that came out <coughs> recently as well that I'll kind of lump in here. Uh, did you see, just off the top, Top Gun, Maverick? I saw, I pretty much watched all, I watched all the trailers. Yeah. Um, all the ones for the, it was interesting to me because I, as I, as I was sitting down and watching all these trailers, I was like, wow, DC has a very huge presence like most of the trailers i was i saw were for dc properties okay arrow flash right supergirl um the, the, none of those are top gun maverick but no but <laughs> they, but they are it, it was just interesting that like i was looking at the, like the the fallout from 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 how like these these, these programs are set up and dc has an an overwhelming abundance of superhero properties on television right now. on television yes so they were. So that was Arrowverse. They're 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 culminating in the final yeah, season. Of the final Arrow. season of Arrow, <clears throat> uh, and they're building towards Crisis on Crisis Infinite, Infinite Earths, Earth, which is a um, amazing storyline from the comic books that they're bringing into this live action crossover shit. Where um, it's going to permeate. There's a, there'll be at least one episode from each one of these DC properties that deals with the Crisis on Infinite Earth. But the most dangerous ones are those who call themselves heroes they claim to fight for the things that matter in life truth family law order and most of all for life itself hey, I got you. What the hell? why is it every time i come to visit there's always a crisis but it's all a lie because in the end there's only one battle one thing to fight against an eternal enemy who must be eliminated forever. And that's death itself. Are we under attack? The scientifically impossible probably will happen. I don't need to understand them. Just tell me what I can do. No one has to die ever again. What are the DC properties that will probably culminate that? Um... Uh, Flash, Arrow, Supergirl, um, and I don't think I would have said Guardian, um, Legends of Tomorrow. Legend, that's what I could think don't of. think. I think this last season was their last. I don't right. think they're making it anymore. So I don't think they're, they're going to be included in that because I didn't. I did not see a um, Legends of Tomorrow uh, trailer. Yes, and then uh, Titan season two is premiering right. September sixth. Right, coming and that's, up this that's year. for the uh, the DC Network. And apparently they're bringing back um, different actors, like uh, Brandon Ruth from uh, Batman. Yeah, or Bra- Brandon Ruth is coming back to play, I guess, Superman on one of the one of the Earths. So, and so that's the uh, the Brian Singer Superman, yeah, the terrible one, the one the one that was completely miscast. Yeah, kind of. It was completely miscast. I have, I kind of like, I like <laughs> elements of it. I like that Superman's got this random kid. I liked, I liked that element. I like the, the the fact that they introduced Superman's son into the uh-huh. into the the world, but like. Brandon Roth is a brown-eyed man. Yes. Superman has classically always been blue-eyed. Ugh, uh, flip the table! Uh, I, I thought Kevin Spacey was underutilized, or like just terribly written. Like He was playing Lex, but... You didn't think he was good, though? I kind of liked him. Mm, I like Parker Posey. I love Parker. Yeah, um, pretty much everything. Yeah, and <laughs> even the shitty things that Parker does, I'm like, oh, I love you. Yeah. Blade 3, loved yeah. her in that. Never seen Loved it. Loved her in that. But one day I will watch Blade 3. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of Blade... 
Oh, wait, we're not there yet. We're not, we're not there yet? Are we sure? We don't want to do it right now? I have a Word document in front of me. Oh, this motherfucker. We're on some trailers. All right, all right. All right, so yes, I did see the Maverick trailer. Right. Uh, did you yeah. like the original Top Gun? Can I be honest? Yeah. It was fine. Yeah. It wasn't... I know a lot of people really liked that movie, and they really... I think it was, it was Tom's breakout. Yeah. It was his sort of like, hey, I'm a... You know, you should give me a, all the money to do this ridiculous stuff. Do you remember the name of the black pilot? No. Pretty sure it's there Apollo. Was, there was a black pilot? Yeah. I don't even remember there being a black pilot. It's either Gemini or Apollo or something like that. It, 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 it felt like a movie that wasn't for me. Do you, okay, so the black pilot in Top Gun, I'm pretty sure... Does he die right away? He's the guy that replaces Goose for a moment. And, Top, and Maverick is flying around, <laughs> and, uh, and he can't get his head straight. And every time he goes to engage... Basically, he says, uh-huh. "No, no, no, it's no good, it's no good." And then he turns the turns his uh, ship around and flies back. And then this guy, I'm pretty sure it's Apollo. I think that's his call sign. Approaches, "Hey, man, hey, man, I'm talking to you. Those were good. Those were good." And, and then Tom Cruise flips out on him. He's like, "Well, I'll tell you when it's good. Blah, 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 it's good enough. It's not good enough. Um, you, something or something." You know what I remember being good about Top Gun? Everything? No, the arcade game. <laughs> that they had in the arcade, <laughs> not the NES game. No, not the any, not the one that you could play at home. The one that yeah. you could get, go to the arcade, sit in, oh, and right. it would pitch and yaw as you were, you know, yeah, yeah. flying around in it. And you had like the joystick, the joystick. That's yeah, cool. that yeah, was, yeah. I think, for me, that was the the top level of, of Top Gun for me. Yeah. I, I, the movie, eh, whatever, sure, whatever. You should be at least a two star admiral by now. Yet here you are. Captain. What is that? It's one of life's mysteries, sir. So this is coming out summer 2020. It has a very rise of of the Skywalker kind of opening where you're in like a desert and something's like flying towards you. Uh-huh. Think about that trailer. She's there. You see Ray, and right. then like there's she a Tie Fighter right. flying towards her. I this don't remember is like, that from the from the Top Gun trailer. I remember him being the trailer I saw. He was basically standing in front of that. Like it's gonna be chock full of dudes that we know. John Hamm's in this. I was like, yeah, really? Damn, fuck Hamm. John Hamm. John Hamm. Hamm. Um, but no, he was, he was talking to some admiral or something, and the admiral's yeah. like, oh, why haven't you some retired? Some admiral. That's, or, uh, what's his face? Um, I don't remember the ad- oh, Damn yeah. it. Yeah. The right <laughs> stuff. Um, I want to say Robert Duvall, and it's, oh, I'll no, think of it in like I don't think minutes. it's Robert Duvall. It it's wasn't not. Robert Duvall. It's um, the actor who's also in so many other things. I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, know that, I know that this guy is like a to-do <laughs> kind of actor, but I can't remember. I don't I'll even remember the thing. scene. <laughs> and that's what that's what, I honest, honestly I don't feel like Top Gun is going to be one of those that I'm going to be clamoring to watch. Uh, honestly, that's no. Just me. But you'll be sitting next to me watching uh, it. All right. Well, Patreon will pay for that ticket. Then. Next next year, Patreon. a full year from now, Patreon will, be, will, pay for that will be sitting in the movie theater. <laughs> well, so it, it kind of opens with Ed Harris talking Harris, to yes. Tom Cruise. Yeah, Ed Harris. And uh, and he's like <laughs> he's like everybody, you know, you should have been promoted yeah, by now. Why, you should be an admiral or You're something still right like now. And captain. Like, yeah. Why what do we, we still need captain? you for? But he's like, well, you know, stuff happens. And then we get a whole bunch of cool shots. Uh, it, 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 it's going to be a good movie based on like I, what I what I do remember from Top Gun being like really into is those shots of like planes in flying in formation. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff like that that's going to be real cool and, and it looks like they're using the F tw- the F um, I want to say twenty is either the twenty two or the twenty five Raptor. I used to know these things. I mean, I as to, a kid, I, I'm yeah. pretty. I was pretty up on it too. I think it's the F twenty two. I think it's the most. Um, it's definitely not the F sixteen. No, because they, they had the fold back wings. Yeah, they 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 were. I, I don't think America even uses the F sixteen anymore. No, it's it's the F twenty two. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, um, and that. And uh, I, for one, know a lot about this based on... I've been on Army bases. I've flown uh, the trainers that 
Air Force pilots fly, use the fl- fly on and things like oh, that. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't tell you about that? No. So the last time I was, remember that sh- that, that show? No I've wonder been, you're not into this. You've lived it a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. Well, you, you know that show I had been working on for like ten years uh, uh, about the Tuskegee Airmen uh, yes. fly. So and and I've done that show a bunch of times over the over the course of the ten years that I had been working on it. And every time that we would go out and do it, we would. But we had one. We had a lot of access to actual military men. We we got in the course of doing the show. We yeah, you did. Got to meet a bunch of uh, uh, surviving Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, we got to uh, we got access to uh, uh, many a different uh, Air Force base. Did you have any um, access <laughs> to seamen? Any seamen on board? Really? Really? <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Really? <laughs> seamen joke, huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, anyway, so they put you in like these so VR they, things. So no, they they literally have um, they built they they put you in a cockpit of a, of of a modern plane. But it's a virtual reality screen. It's just it's basically like what I was just talking about, like Top Gun from the eighties arcade. Right. But life size and actual. Um it's dope. It was one of the coolest experiences I'd ever had. Uh, that and it wasn't even it wasn't even the good trainer. We were it was like the bullshit trainer that they start on. Like they didn't even they wouldn't even let us on like the good trainers in yeah. like the back. Do you think they're using actual VR now? They must be. Mm, like headsets. I don't think so. I don't I, I don't I think they might have been using um some version of that for like field training mm-hmm. like you know what Keanu does for, for sure. uh, John Wick and stuff but I think with pilots they either sim them like in a simulator and then put them in an actual plane yeah. there is no like VR aspect of it uh, kind of Sony thing. just put out a new patent for a new VR headset really yeah and the rumor is it's supposed to release with the PlayStation 5 interesting and it's supposed to be wireless and just you know, sort of like what the yeah, Oculus Quest is. So you just have these two little hand controllers. You have this wireless headset, uh-huh. and then it links to the PlayStation Five. Could be cool. I I I like what I'm hearing the wireless parts yeah, of it. That sounds exactly. Awesome. So you don't have to set up all these different like TV like monitor things. Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, like blah. The, the the receivers for the signals and all that stuff. Yeah. There's there's only one last <laughs> thing for Top Gun that uh, uh, there's like a couple shots where it looks like he's wearing a space helmet. Uh huh. Would you be more into this if he ends up going to space? Um, Some kind of like space I don't adventure? Know. I don't know. I, maybe. I, I mean, yeah. One of the things I was into this 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 week uh, dealt with space pretty heavily. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think I think probably. Um, right. For for some of those high altitude type uh, um, test pilots, like like when they're testing like new uh, planes right. or whatever, that typically I think what he's wearing is what you would wear in like high altitude test. Right. So um, it could be like kind of the right stuff. Right. Which Ed Harris was also in. <coughs> uh, it Chapter 2 had another looks awesome. preview. It looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've read. The, you read yeah. the book, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Years I read ago. the book. My kids want to read the book, but I'm like, you got, you're, nah, not, you're not yet. You guys suck at reading. Get better, and then you can read <laughs> you, the book. You, you don't even say that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys suck at reading. Go, go in your room and play video games. <laughs> I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Rob has tuberculosis this week. <laughs> Yeah, for some reason I've got this. It's the black lung, huh? It's bad. I woke <laughs> up this morning and I was just like, huh, 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 huh. <laughs> something happens to you when you leave this town. The farther away, the hazier it all gets. But me, I never left. I remember all of it. To the losers. We made an oath. I swear, if it isn't dead, if it ever comes back, we'll come back to We didn't stop it. Pennywise. The clown. <laughs> we can't let it happen again. Yeah, it looks really good. It looks awesome. Uh, I want to rewatch that, because you and I watched the first It movie together. Did we? Yeah, me, you, and Laurel on the couch. That's right. <laughs> have, you, uh, have you seen it since then? No. Yeah. No. And it was good. I it remember really good. liking it. So I might go back and rewatch it as that, that gets uh, closer to coming out. I'm psyched about it. Uh, it I, I, I kind of wanted to... Oh, God. Sorry, guys. Um, I kind of wanted to go back and see the original. Oh, yeah. Because the original was so... Tim Curry was so fucking... Yeah. Uh, ...in that movie. Yeah. I remember being really disturbed by it when I saw it as a kid. Um, I, I've, I've seen at least part of it recently. Really, it's it's pretty good. It holds up still, right? 
For the most part, yeah. But it's still a TV series, so mm-hmm. it has those commercial break right. kind of things right, 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 built right. into it. So it doesn't quite... And it, but it's still scary, and Tim Curry is still frightening. I mean, that's you don't need much more than like some clown makeup and some scary teeth, and right. like, that's freaky as right. fuck. And that motherfucker there, Jesus. Um, but the, the kid did a good job. Skarsgård is that is that uh, I think guy so. who took over for it? Yeah, yeah, he he was really well done in that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for it. Uh, Terminator Dark Fate. Saw that one. Lots yeah. of information on that. Edward Furlong is back as John Connor. I, I like everything about like the like we've talked about it almost at nauseum on on the podcast is is that this is going to be the Terminator that we've been waiting for since the second one. Mm. It's just a fast white knuckle ride. You better watch your ass. I hunt Terminators, metal motherfucker. It follows tonally in the footsteps of T one and T two that adrenaline rush feeling that sense of terror in this film the action is 10 times bigger it's like holy shit holy shit holy shit this film is relentless it just does not stop just fucking insane And it's it's it has, gonna be rated R. It has all the all the right bells and whistles uh, for it to be an exceptional Terminator movie, which we haven't had in a while. Yeah, it um, could also still really suck. I doubt that. I I, I I'm, I'm gonna go on the record and say right now that this is this is gonna be the best Terminator movie we've had in at least a decade. Okay, I'll say Easily. it will be the best one since Terminator Two, but yeah. still kind of suck. I I disagree. Yeah, I disagree, but. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. Rated R. At least there's we'll cursing. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's character is named Carl. Speak, you were saying that uh, Dave got a picture with uh, um, Kevin Smith. Yeah. Uh, do you see the trailer for Jay and Silent Bob's movie? I'm done talking about Terminator Dark Fate. What, what else is there to say? Well, we're we're going to see it. Okay, okay. Well, I wanted to just say, I, I feel and like... We talked about it at nauseam on this fucking podcast. But I feel like it's announcing Edward Furlong's back. We talked about that last week. Did Eddie we talk about that? Yes. His, his... We talked about Eddie being back. We, we, we talked talk about, about Eddie. He's... We talked about Cameron. We talked about Linda and Arnie being brought back together right. and this being okay. a co- cogent... Right, I remember that now. But we, what I looked up was both Linda and Edward Furlong had like... Issues. Issues. We with, talked about that, cocaine. too. You and I talked about it after the fact, not on the podcast. This is why we should never talk except on the podcast, because mm. then we start mixing up what we've actually talked about. Because when, after Laurel surgery, my wife had surgery this week. She's fine. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Uh, she's at work right now, so that's how fine she is. Yeah. I put her right back to work. I was like, you've just had some serious surgery. Right on back to work, lady. Um, but no, so him and Linda Han- Hamilton were both basically... <laughs> thought you were gonna pick up that script and start reading it I was gonna, yeah i was gonna yeah, <laughs> yeah anyways keep, no keep going keep going uh, no seriously Birdman. <laughs> he's using it as a fan but i thought he was gonna read they had serious uh problems with cocaine uh duh i didn't know Lin- <laughs> linda hamilton i knew edward furlong did because he was like a kid actor right? yeah but not every kid actor does cocaine but fucking linda hamilton oh yeah 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 fuck she was a superstar from the 80s yeah. you didn't think she was into she was a superstar from the 80s and then fell off the planet. What do you think she was doing? Cocaine. Damn right. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> so I bet Edward Furlong dies in the first five minutes. Mm. And that, and then Linda Hamilton's character, Sarah Connor, is like, and then now what do I do? I guess I just go around and I kill some Terminators. No, I, I bet. I bet that you don't see him till like one of the most pivotal points in the movie. I bet he's not. I bet you don't see him in the first five, but you'll see him like maybe the latter third of the film and he'll be, he'll come in and legitimately save the day he's legitimately overweight is he yeah, yeah. have you seen him yeah, he, he, I mean that's what happens when you get off drugs though I mean, <laughs> apparently he's clean but he like, like <laughs> totally up. yeah hmm. he, he blew up so but you, you actually seen photos of him oh yeah yeah oh wow because I was like trying to figure out what happened to Lil Hamilton that led me down to like what happened to Edward Furlong and then like you said, oh, Linda Hamilton. I thought you said what, what happened to Little Hamilton. I'm what like, happened to Little Hamilton? You mean Alexander? No, no. It's the mini version of Hamilton. <laughs> it's, it's the sidewalk version. They, they put it on outside of the play. Um, what about, uh, you talked about his dark materials last week. I yeah. finally saw the, the preview for that. It looks awesome. It actually made me want to go back and watch uh, The Golden Compass. Yeah. Because I, that's that's the, the source material that it's based yeah, on. Yeah, I guess that's in our future, right? Yeah. yeah. I'll watch it. 
I'll watch it. I I wasn't so much blown away by Lin Manuel, but everybody, everything else about it was like, oh, this is cool. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I mean, it looked kind of like cross between Lord of the Rings and Little Harry Potter. Gentlemen, there is a war raging right now with the Magisterium. Between those trying to keep us in ignorance and those willing to fight for truth and freedom. Who will stand with me? This kind of heresy is of the highest priority to the Magisterium. I need to know where he's going and what he intends to achieve. Gronk was packing up to leave. You're not leaving! I can't stay! The North is no place for a child. Myra, the Master has asked if I can find a place for you. And I want you as my assistant. You're an explorer too? Just like my uncle. I can teach you to wield power, but you must let me mold you. We believe there is an organization that is stealing children and taking them north. Sometimes children can just disappear. Well, did you see the Golden Compass? Uh, I can't remember. I think you should. I think you, it, it's. I highly recommend it. Um, what's his face is in it? Bond. Craig is in it. Oh, damn and uh, an old girl from uh, the Auss- the Aussie, Colt Kidman. Kidman's. Okay. All right. It, the cast is. It, it's it's a children's movie, but it's done adult. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen it, I, 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 I'd say check out Golden Compass and then go back and watch the trailer for this. And I think I think if you weren't excited uh, for it, you'd be more, you would be more excited for it. Uh, you check out you check out the uh, the Witcher. Yeah, I Witcher did. Witcher trailer. What did you think about that? You're uh, a big fan I of the had, game. I have issues. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I st- and most of them and it's. And once again, and we've talked about this on the podcast, it's not with the surrounding, it's with Cavill himself as the Witcher. His hair. Well, not so much the hair now. It wasn't His the muscles. hair. No, it was the, the lack of another sword. Oh, yeah. Witchers ha- carry two traditionally swords. two swords. Because? One silver for monsters, and one's just, you know, regular steel for mm-hmm. your, you know, random right. highwayman or whatever. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they. Maybe they'll explain that in the show. Maybe you, you'll get to see him presented with the second right. sword or other. But based on what I was watching in the trailers, I was like, "Yeah, but where's the second sword?" Right. Like he, he doesn't quite look like Geralt of Rivia yet right. to me. He kind of looks like Henry Cavill in a bad way. Maybe this is like his origin. It could be. You, you might. Know. You might be right. But there's that. There's that shot in the, um, in the trailer where you see his eyes go dark. Right. Uh, and that's. That's uh, part of the 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 Witcher, the process of becoming a Witcher. They they basically poison you. They they basically uh, they put all these poisons in you to to so your body will build up a resistance to it. Right. And so that that thing is him going there to that place. It's it's hard to explain without like. Yeah. Going into the game and gameplay and sort of what, what that kind of entails. And remembering it from like two years ago when we played it. Well, I, I, I have it at the house. I was actually uh, booting it up um, a couple days ago. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't actually start playing, but I was booting it up because it's it's some of the best gameplay. Like, s- storytelling gameplay of of the ilk um, of fantasy. Like, in the way that... Um, what was that one but that Bethesda did a few years ago? Um, Skyrim? Yeah, Skyrim. It's like Skyrim, but without the first person. Right. You know? It's all third person. It's all third yeah. person and done better. I mean, because you can play Skyrim in third person, but it always had that weird kind of right. look to it. There's like, my arms. My arms are moving <laughs> like this. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah. You always got the sense that if you turned around, there was no body. It was just two floating arms. <laughs> right? I'm hearing stories. About witches. Is it true what they say? Elves are the original sorcerers of the continent. When humans and monsters arrived, elves taught the humans how to turn chaos into magic. And then the humans slaughtered them. Chaos is the most dangerous thing in this world. But without control, chaos will kill you. So that's all life is to you? Monsters and money? It's all it needs to be. Something out there waits for you. This child will be extraordinary. Yennefer, imagine the most powerful woman in the world. Do you have what it takes? 
If you if you were a monster hunter and you had one sword for humans and one sword for monsters, silvers for monsters, right? Yes. Yeah. And you were just you know you had like your horse there named Roach, and you were just like kind of patrolling around. Would you would you be wearing both swords, or do you think you would have one of your swords possibly stored on your horse? I think because that's been the excuse about if, the two swords thing. He's got he's got a sword on his horse is carrying a sword. I think if your job is to kill monsters, you probably would have the sword. Well, you probably would have at least one sword on you t- for that. I, I would. I feel like for me, I would always have a silver sword on. Me. Yeah. I think the other sword just to kill you know highwaymen and like normal humans or whatever. I don't know. Maybe it seems. Seems like a bit much. I could kill those sons, sons of bitches with a silver sword. Exactly. Too. So maybe the sword he has is a silver. Maybe they just realized this is so totally superfluous. Right. And we only need to give him you know, one, one sword, sword and it's right. silver. Right. Guess what? Right. Yeah. You're right. There's, you're also, the right shot, there's also like the shot where he's got kind of like that ball whip thing that that he drops at one point. It, it looks like it's made of silver, like silver balls. That's in the trailer. Silver balls. Silver balls. You mean like a like silver a whip, balls. like from Castlevania kind of whip? Kind of, yeah. It kind of looks like that, or some versions. Like of the that. morning, like you, you. I don't know. Did you ever finish Castlevania? You ever Which finish one? It? The 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 show. Oh, the show. No, you never finished. It. No, I watched. So it's these. not. Uh, yeah, it's because I was going to reference. He uses a whip in that. It's basically like a chained. It's like a chain mace. Right. Um, so like that? Kind of, but there's not really a mace at the end. It's made it, whatever. Watch the trailer. Yeah. You'll see I, 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 I thought I had. Or we'll just wait and see yeah. this show. Uh, there's also like a glowing tree in it. I'm like, <coughs> yeah. what is that? Jennifer's uh, face is all messed Jennifer, up. Jennifer, yeah, that's, that's the interesting. And I don't know if that's because I jumped into The Witcher in that third game. Right. And there were two prior installments before that. Right. And I don't know if that version of Jennifer comes out of those two prior installments. I know that... Her and uh, Geralt, by the time they get to the third one, they have had, they were lovers, and there, <clears throat> there was some sort of, there was something major that happened in the first two games where Geralt was being controlled or something by someone or uh, it, it was, which we never played because they were on Xbox. Right. I, I, I would need to go back and sort of like, uh, I don't know, wiki the, 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 the timeline and the history of it because I think by the time we get to. The Witcher, where I think they're going to be placing it. I think this. I think the show is placed firmly, maybe I don't know, in Witcher Three mm-hmm. uh, mythos or you know uh, mythology. Um, I don't know. I, it could it, it it could explain why Jen- Yennefer looks the way she looks initially. She sure, sure looks like this. Yeah, she looks like, uh, like her, like her <clears throat> jaws falling off. Like uh, like she's, she's like, like Kanye sort of, West after his accident. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or like how many U.S. now with the pins with his exactly. jaw as well. Um, uh, next, you know what? We got the card. Have you ever been a stranger to yourself? Many, many times. Nearly two decades ago, Commander Data sacrificed his life for me these past few years i really tried to belong here but it never truly felt like home do you know who i am everything inside of me says that i'm safe with you admiral i have encountered a woman she came to me for help if she is who i think she is She's in serious danger. Sometimes I worry that you have forgotten who you are. We do not. You can't do it alone. You need help. You need protection. You need a crew. Be the captain they remember. she truly is she's the end of all she's the destroyer the hell are you doing out here Picard saving the galaxy engage yeah I 
I loved it. I love that trailer. Me the trailer, too. Uh, the reveal with Jerry Ryan, Seven of Nine coming back. I we got a couple of reveals, which was interesting because I was like, those two characters never really met because they were on two disparate Star Trek shows, right? Unless they met during one of the movies, which I don't recall that being a thing. But I I found it interesting that Picard recognizes her, uh, at least from the trailer, he recognizes her, and I was like, Seven oh, of Nine. Seven of Nine. Yeah, yeah. Like, She's so from they Voyager. had to have met at some point. Because <laughs> I, I love Jerry Ryan. Yeah, and she looks fantastic. Oh, uh, yeah. She does not look like she aged at all. And I, I never she watched did. Voyager. I, you didn't? I, without, I'm, I'm going to get to it. It's mm. coming. I'm trying to get through Next Generation. Mm-hmm. Okay. I watched a really good Next Generation episode this week. Okay. Uh, but I'm trying to get get there. It's got like 400 episodes. I mean, there's so many episodes. Uh, Voyager? Yeah. Voyager does not have 400. It's so many. It's like 238 episodes. That there's is not so true. so many, man. Fucking Next Generation has more episodes than Voyager. Really? By a lot. Okay. Because Next Generation went seven seasons and Voyager only went like four. So she came on during their fourth <clears throat> season, right? Because they needed somebody who was like good was looking. She was gorgeous. Yeah. She was she was, that was dumb the ru- gorgeous. That was the, that's the cynical sexist rumor, but... Is that, it? I don't know. It, it, they, it very they, well may be true because uh, up until up until Jerry Ryan was added to that cast, uh, there was really no real. I mean, other than Kate Mulgrew, who was amazing as Captain Janeway. That's all I needed. Um, Captain, uh, Captain me away. Captain yeah, me to bed. No, no. Captain into uh, my pants. Jer- uh, Engage. Kate Mul- Mulgrew. Um, she was great as the first female captain in that yeah. we got to follow in in the Star Trek canon. And then they added Jerry Ryan's character that was kind of a, like a mentoree mm-hmm. um, to uh, um, Janeway. It, it was, and it was a really interesting dynamic of, of having these two strong female leads, and one of them was a Borg, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but yeah, I... So I, she was a Borg drone? She was a Borg drone yeah. that, they, that they removed from the hive. And then after, after they removed her from the hive, she joined the crew of the Voyager and ultimately helped them get back home to the Alpha Quadrant. And there's definitely, she definitely, like, the Borg is a presence in this Picard show. I, uh, well, you saw it in the trailer. There was yeah. uh, that Borg ship that they, that they showed you. I, I, I'm looking forward to it more now. But it also, it was the first time I, in a lo- it was the first time ever that I looked at Patrick Stewart and was like, yo, you looking old, bro. Yeah, because he is. Yeah, but like, even back, like, he, he, he was old on Next Generation. Let's not, yes. let's not trip. But he didn't, he, he like just look. squeezed in, I think. That's how I feel like. Was like, that? Like, when they cast him, they were like, we're going out on a limb here. This guy has no hair. He's a little on the old side for a captain. I don't know. He's not buff like like uh Like, Kirk. who was buff? Like, Kirk? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Kirk, not like Kirk, Kirk was buff, but, here. like, was you know what I mean? As fuck. Like, it was a conscious choice. Like, we're going to take this in a cerebral place. Huh. You know what I mean? It, he was old during those... The... And it, he paid off in spades. Oh, yeah. Like, he, I think he turned it into an entirely different show than maybe what they initially intended just mm. by casting him. Mm. Uh, well, he definitely made everyone else around him better. But, yeah, I, I definitely, I was watching, I had two thoughts. I mean, I was watching him like, yeah, you look a little old. Then I had no, other moments where I was like, but not that old. I disagree. I, it was the first time I, I was looking at Stewart ever and was like, fuck. And I don't know if that was an intention. I don't know if that's him acting, if he's, like, yeah. putting it on. <laughs> but, like, he is 70-some-odd years fucking old. But it's the first time I, I was like, damn. Patrick, yeah. man. Uh, so the, I hope you don't I, like. He's looking frail and like and like easily like blow him over and die. I'm like, don't 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 don't, 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 don't be that. Don't blow on him. Don't breathe on. Don't him. breathe on him too hard, man. Please. Uh, <clears throat> at the on the panel, uh, they announced that Jonathan Del Arco, who plays uh, Hugh, you know the Borg that the Enterprise helped. Right, free right, from the right. Wow, he's wow. coming back for this. And he had like two episodes yeah. in the entire canon of that thing. Yeah, but it always sort of felt like they were supposed to be this third episode. It always felt like they were going to bring him back. That's yes. what it felt like. They they basically so basically, and I remember this episode. It was a it was the other it was the first episode that they, um, the precedent for like taking a Borg away from the collective and giving him back his his individuality. Right. That kind of leads to Seven of Nine. In I, a way. I, yeah. I think it. I think it absolutely does lead yeah. to Seven of Nine. I think. I think that that was a precedent that allowed them to be like, oh, this person can then join the crew. I think what we so I, I think this is a dope idea that uh, that they bring him back now yeah. because I feel like that was one of the threads that 
that I felt like Star if if Star Trek uh, Next Generation had gone maybe another season, maybe into an eighth season, mm-hmm. we probably would have gotten to that see Stu come back. Yeah. Um, the way, you know, a Q and, and those people sort of make re- reemergence. Yeah, so he was in I, Borg, and then Descent. Yeah, those are the two episodes. <laughs> uh, we also got Data, or Data. I did see him. It's I, Data. I, it's, it's Data. data. Uh, and but I feel like Brent Troy Spider. sometimes says Data. Who? Troy. Counselor Troy. Well, I feel like it's going to say I think Data. Mi- I think Mi- Mira uh, Circus has uh, an interesting accent, and, yeah. and sometimes it just... Uh, you think she'll be back for Picard? Oh, yeah. I think so. What about Riker? I think I think I think most of the the yeah, bridge crew will be back. They're coming because Riker. Cause I think Jonathan Frakes is directing, so he's going to put. I was going to say, like, Frakes, if Frakes isn't in these episodes, he's at least directing a bunch yeah. of them. <clears throat> so re- real quickly, I think it's called Duplicate. The episode I watched two nights ago was when Riker. You don't want to wait till what we get what we're into. Nah, because I'm going to do it real quick because it might actually play into this. But Riker ends up they the Enterprise goes to some planet that they haven't that they've never been to but will riker's been there years ago and in fact he saved a bunch of people and transported them off the planet this is from like 15 years earlier and that led to a promotion that basically put him on the right track that dissolved his relationship with diana troy but when they go down to the planet they find another will riker down on the planet do you remember this one no so basically there's two will rikers and they figure out that this thing happened that duplicated Riker. One went aboard the ship that he was supposed to go on, and the other one stayed on this planet for eight years trapped there. And so... It, it kind of... It sounds familiar, but I'm not remembering any of the details from this episode. So he comes back onto the Enterprise. He has this relationship with Diana Troy. uh uh-huh. Because basically, he never was promoted. This version of Riker was never right. promoted. So he never had was put in the position to be like, I need to break off this relationship right. and pursue my career. So he pursues a, a, a relationship with Diana Troy. And then Picard is like... You, you know what's fucking funny? What? This is literally the season finale... What you just described there is the season finale from the the Orville. Orville, yeah, that's what Laurel was saying. She's like, I think this is an episode of the, the Orville. This, yeah, that's ex- that's exactly. exactly what the Orville is. So the the thing that I didn't realize is that Picard puts this second Will Riker on a uh, a like a space dock basically and gives him a job. There's two Will Rikers out in the in the universe. Yeah, yeah, that's ex- yeah, that's that's the season finale of the last season of the Orville. Right. So, I, which I think Frakes directed. Right. <laughs> uh, so what happens to Riker at the end of Enterprise? Doesn't he get his own ship at some point? Uh, well, we never see that as far as like uh, where the show ends. And but from what the movies kind of t- tell us, because they did a few Star Trek movies with this cast, yeah. with you know uh, the cast of uh, Next Generation, and I think he makes it to Admiral. Yeah, I think because he ends up in his own ship, the USS Titan. So yeah, he basically after so basically after the end of Next Generation, Riker continues his career and ends up with his own ship. Yes, and he, he becomes an admiral. He ends up in an admiral <clears> desk <throat> is what it says here in this thing. So the season finale, all good things. Is so going we to will the future. almost we will almost yeah. definitely see him in Picard. We'll almost definitely yeah. see him. It would be it would be sad to not see him. I I don't think they could get away with it. I, yeah. I mean, uh, he was his second in command for all those years, at least seven years uh, on the Enterprise. Yeah, and he directed so many of those episodes. He started to direct so many of those episodes in the seasons. So, like, yeah, you, we'll see. We will definitely see the main cast of yeah. the Enterprise uh, um, as, uh, next yeah. generation. I'd say I, even Beverly Crusher. I, I think Crusher will be back. Yeah, and definitely Jordy. Fucking Lavar ain't doing nothing but looking gorgeous. And I would not be. I mean, I can't remember what happens to Worf, and I'm not there yet in, in Next Generation. Oh well, but I, like, I don't want to ruin it for you. But Worf is one of the few characters that actually continues after Next Generation. He does. Okay. He goes from Next Generation to Deep Space Nine. Oh, he does. Okay. All yeah, right, he cool. joins the cast of Deep Space Nine pretty Sweet. shortly after that. Um, Worf week, Worf year. Uh, it, and honestly, if you haven't watched Deep Space Nine, uh, I say this all the time. I feel like off and on, I, I, I've seen. It's it's uh, so probably good. a third of them, but I'm gonna go back and watch them all. It's 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 yeah. incredibly good. It's one of the it, like I, I I vacillate between that being my favorite of the Star Treks between that and Next Generation. I vacillate kind of yeah. It it, it depends on the day because I love Patrick Stewart as an actor and I love what he did for that series and 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 why it was so good for long as long as it was. But seeing a black man helm 
as Fuck captain yeah. and and some of the stories that they that they ended up coming out of of that um that piece of star trek is so incredible yeah. so good and uh the last guy we're gonna talk <laughs> about is data so at the end of uh star trek nemesis data basically sacrifices Sacrifice himself, himself and they talk yeah. about it in the trailer well, in the trailer uh, for Picard, you see the pieces of Data, but we don't. We're not sure that it's Data. It could it be. It could be his brother, um, Lore. Lore, right? It could also be B four, because at the end of Nemesis, Data puts all of his memories into B four, which is like kind of this inferior Prototype version of himself. Yeah, of himself. I remember that? And it does not respond the same way. <clears throat> Wait. Uh, so, by the, at the end of that uh, Nemesis. We, I, I think I do remember the end of that where you do see a version of Data at the end of that movie. Right. But it's not the Data that we've known. It's the one that he kind of um, safety netted himself into. Yeah. Okay. And actually, Spiner is, has confirmed that the android in cold storage in the trailer is B4, uh-huh. but has clarified that he's playing Data, not B4. So the one you see in that that's all cut up in those pieces, that's not... That's not data. That's not data. So how, so they're going to have to have some amazing deus ex machina explanation yeah. for how data survives yeah. Nemesis. Exactly. Okay. Cool. I'm in, right. I'm in with it. And then the only, only other thing, that <clears> at the <throat> beginning of the trailer, the first question that, that comes up is, have you ever been a stranger to yourself? This is something that some unknown person asks Picard. Picard. And then later... Uh, there's the question of who is the woman that, that comes to Picard that he has to protect. Right. That someone says, this person's the end of, of all, the destroyer. That's the big question is who that girl is. Mm-hmm. But isn't that also kind of the uh, the plot of Firefly? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the plot of Firefly is that this girl was made into a weapon to use in this war, but then her handler basically runs off with her to yeah. prevent her from being his weapon. Right. Um, I'm so psyched for for this show. I, I I am too. Like having having seen the trailer now, like the the, the full on trailer. Yeah. I yeah. I'm stoked for it. So I really psyched. Am. Um. Uh. You got anything else? I guess I got a couple bit of news from the week. Hold on, I get two more trailers here. <laughs> oh, what, and then, oh really? and then, what then we'll got? do the news, and then we'll do Marvel. How about that? Uh. uh so we got cats. Marvel. Yeah. I, I I'm stoked for it. I don't, Me too. I'm stoked for it. I, I know a lot of people were <laughs> shitting on it, but I was like. <laughs> I'm, it's a play about cats. If you've seen this show, th- this is exactly where it was going to go to. Memories. It was this, like I, I, I didn't see where I like. I think I might be the only person. I, I might be in the minority here, but like I saw that show and I was like, that looks cool. I'll, I'll see that shit. It looks cool. It didn't look good, but it looked cool. It looked like, yeah, but it's cats. <laughs> this cats never. There was no, you can't say cats and be like, oh, that's a cool musical. <laughs> no one ever said that. No one was ever like, "Oh, go see cats. It's really cool." You, no one would say that shit. You know what gets me though is is <clears throat> the lips. What do you mean about the lips? They've like CGI'd some of their lips. That's not true. It, it ch- that is not true. Take a moment and watch the trailer again. Uh, I, and I, tell I, me that I will those lips are real. That Jennifer Hudson's <laughs> lips are real. Yeah. I, think. I I I think people need to get over their fucking selves. This is a it, it's a play. That they turn into a movie about alley cats. I, what I, the listen, fuck else did you think was going to happen? You and I will go see it. I'll see it. We'll also see Sonic. <laughs> we'll see them both mm, back to back. I don't know about that. We're going to go see Sonic. I think I think you might have to see that one. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go see Cats. You go see Sonic. And then we'll I'd meet say and we get really drunk and we go see Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, um, but, but okay, so they're raceless, right? Because you don't yeah. really get the races from the cats because they're cats. Why would, yeah. Why? They're sexless. You don't really get the cats. But when you get to... Um, Different body types, right? No, no, no. You're a fat cat. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're fat in life. You're gonna get a. You're gonna be a fat cat well, in the, sh- in the, in the movie. We're gonna take James Cordon, Cordon, and uh, and like sl- like He's CGI slay him down. Anymore. He's just kind of like just kind of hefty. Portly. Portly. That's another He's word robust. for fat, bro. Robust. That is a what is it? A and synonym then, for fat. And what's the other? What's the girl's uh, rebel? Al Wilson. Oh, Wilson. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're like, no, no, no. You're not gonna get a skinny body. You're gonna get. What? We could easily give it to you. But now, instead, why would you want? To, why would you want to do that? I don't because know. Because everybody would. Because because then the first thing out of people's mother, motherfuckers' mouths would have been like, "Oh, they CGI skinnied her down." Well, that's that's true. Uh, they, there would have been a whole other <laughs> box of fuckery that opened because of that. I saw it, I, and actually, this is funny because when when I when I saw it, when I saw the trailer, it was after I had read a bunch of like scathing. Like people, right, right. people were like, "Oh my god, Cats this is looks terrible. this is bad." And then I, I watched it, and I was like, "I don't see why people are tripping. This looks amazing." I 
won't see me before her eyes. Open up and tell me if you find the meaning of what happiness is. We watched it together with my wife, and you guys talked about it the whole time, and, and she was like, we watched it here. No, no, no. See, this is why we can never hang out the except you talking when we record the we podcast. Did, I did not watch that trailer <laughs> here. Did. No, I didn't. We had a little barbecue downstairs. No, we came no. That, that never happened. The, you're not going to inception me with that. No, that <laughs> never happened. Me. I saw this. I saw that trailer uh, uh, probably in the... Uh, no, I, was on, I remember I was taking a shit. I was like, well, now's the perfect time. Let me let me pull this up. And I was sitting there okay, grunting. Okay, well, then you it watched out. it again with me. Mm, because I, Laurel, I and it was totally, it's a no, totally a Laurel I've never. She's like, this looks really good. I, I, I know for a fact it didn't happen because I would have remembered discussing anything about cats with you and Laurel. Okay. The fact that we just had a whole conversation about it and that was that came up at the end, no, that never happened. I guess we'll never know. We'll no. have to go with no, whatever. I, no, I... Pretty, pretty, pretty solid up who, here. Pretty solid. Who's up usually here. the most sober? Whatever he thinks. Oh, yeah, that's me. That, you, you're usually the most sober. Hell yeah! Look, just because I drink all the time, I'm still mostly sober. That's <laughs> true. Still mostly sober. I mean, you let me take care of your kids. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to be sober to go see Jojo Rabbit, the Taika Waititi I, movie. I I saw the trailer for it finally. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Either. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I, I like the premise, and I, I like John. Is that John Hamm as Hitler? No, it's Taika Waititi. Oh, that, that's, that's him? him? Yeah, <laughs> John Hamm would have been a good choice. <laughs> I thought it was John Hamm. I was like, damn, John Hamm is killing it right yeah. now as Hitler. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I, I, I feel like I want to like this movie a lot, but <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just not sure. <laughs> I'm just not sure. Uh, I'll, I think I'll wait. I'm, I'm, a, like I'm a reserve a judgment on this. I'm a reserve judgment for it for a little. I bit. I don't think Taika Waititi is Jewish. No, he could so. be. But I don't know. I doubt I mean, it. I mean, a Samoan Jew. It just depends. Like, and, and obviously, <coughs> it's satire. But it depends if you want to enter into the realm of Nazis and and think about comedy at the same time. And maybe that's important to do. But at the same time, maybe it's also some didn't some Tarantino, area you don't want to go. Didn't Tarantino do it with uh... Inglorious Bastards? But right. he added a lot of violence. This is like this is Taika Waititi style, which is right almost Com- almost cartoonish, right? Yeah, but it's also the main character is a little boy. Yes. So how a little Nazi? So how I'm I'm will, I'm trying to figure out where this is going to go. Like how. Well, maybe, yeah. I mean, because I, I think the idea is that the, the little boy is probably just not good at being a Nazi. Right. And I, you know that happened. Right. You know that there were these little kids that, like, were forced into being Nazis and grew up as teenagers and became, you know, the SS right. or whatever. And probably just, one, weren't good at it, and two, uh, didn't like doing it. But at the same time... Wouldn't should, it be funny if? Or it's sort of like the the argument of, like, you know... The, the older older Jewish men or, or women that never saw Schindler's List because I don't want to see a movie about the one good Nazi. You know what I mean? Right. I get that. Yeah, I, do I get too. that. I definitely get that. Like, do you um, want to see a good movie about like it was a, the like, movie about the good slave owner? It's right. kind of like me. That was kind of like how I, I didn't watch The Wire. Like right. where everybody was like, "Oh, The Wire." The I'm Wire. Like, mm, yeah, but you're you know, you're my... not white, and that's why you didn't watch The Wire. Probably because I think <laughs> most of the time people are like most of the people who are like, "Oh my God, have you seen The Wire?" Have been white. The first two seasons, three seasons were pretty good. I believe it. Yeah. I, and there were I I I tuned in. I didn't. I wasn't completely like shut off from it. I did kind of tune into a few episodes, but like. It, it was good. It, the show was good because it made me not want to watch it. Yeah. Because um, I was like, that's too real. I know these people. Right. These are these are friends and family of mine that, uh, yeah, I don't need I don't need to I don't need to come home and, and glorify watching this on, on, on the TV. I've, I've kind of I know people who have lived this and I uh, and so it didn't it didn't it didn't um, resonate resonate right? with yeah. me. For white it, people, it though, it resonated with a lot of white friends. About yeah, it. because they were mostly like, "Oh my gosh, is this black drug dealers are smart? Is this a thing? They're yeah. really, they're really good at their jobs, and there's violence. We'll take it. We'll, do <laughs> we'll take it all at once. You know, you hear about the uh, speaking of yeah. uh, 
violence and that you hear this talk about them trying to maybe reboot uh the sopranos no do you hear about this i heard that they were making a it wasn't a uh, reboot oh, a, a standalone they were gonna make a standalone like prequel right right of stony tony's son right yeah, yeah but now they're i think they're talking about making that prequel like a full-on thing thing yeah like a show yeah oh interesting yeah James Gandolfini's dead, though. Yeah, but his son isn't, and his yeah. son could definitely do that. Do you think that they, for that show, would they have this kind of like flashback, or were they would they allude to the fact that Tony Soprano's been killed, or murdered, or would he just die of a heart attack? Uh, I mean, that, you, I could see them you just would being know like, better than me. It's been a long time since Tony Soprano died of that heart attack five years ago. It or would, I could also see them being like, he was gunned down. We're gonna go get his killers. <laughs> It was, I don't know because I I watched very little of the show. I, yeah, it, I, I felt the show a little bit to me. It felt a little caricature of Italian Americans in a way that I was like, I know Italians and they're not like this. Yeah. This is weird. It gets even really more meta when what's her face Tony Soprano's husband or wife, um, e- e- Edie Falco. Edie Falco. She ends up going to like adore. some like community board thing. And they're they're big donators, their family, because they've uh-huh. got a lot of money, so they donate to the community quite a bit. Uh, they do it for tax purposes, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, somebody confronts her at one of these things and says, your family is the reason that, like, Italian stereotypes exist. Mm. So there's sort of, like, this meta-like wow. confrontation about that idea. That's cool. But just like <clears throat> anything, there's always these... There, there are people that are really like that. You know what I mean? I guess. I, I, I mean, you're probably right because those same. Uh, um, I get them, man. I work at, I work at two Italian restaurants. Trust me, I get dudes that come in there that I can tell are like either they think that they're gangsters or uh, they actually are. Hmm. You know, they're that it, that whole version it, of that. You know what? It you're, you're probably right because those same uh, um, Italian American friends of mine, uh, the ones who I'm like, wow, this seems very offensive to you guys. They, they love, love that shit. They love it. Yeah. They I'm sure it. not I, every Italian loves it, but but yeah, there are but versions that do. I think it just goes to what we always say on the show about how representation matters, even if it's yeah, sure, even if it's scandalized and tropish and yeah. I think I think um, going back to like The Wire, I, I I I know that when that show was first coming out, there were a lot of a lot of of the black community that that embraced it, mm-hmm. and then as it went further on, and white people really embraced it, then it became became this, in my opinion, this sort of like kind of backlash from the black perspective like we look at how many white people like it well fuck that we don't we're not into that i'm not saying mm. that that was your opinion no because you obviously I, had your yeah. own individual yeah. thing but i i remember a time when it was fairly universally claimed from everybody you know that, now it's become this thing like oh white people love the wire uh-huh. that's the joke you know what i mean but oh but yeah I, it's that's interesting to me i i because I, I tried... To, I, a lot of the things that people end up being like, I'm really into Game of Thrones. There's another right. one where like people are like, oh, you should do this, you should do this. Whenever I would tune in... I Like I said, I, I mean, I sat down and, and did that first season and was like... Mm. Yeah. 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 Okay. You know? I, I think I've always been on sort of the the outskirts of a lot of what people are like, this is what you should watch. But, but, but here's the crazy thing. I feel like I've always been... Had my... Like... For, for, for example... Um, Avatar: The Last Airbender, one yes. of the best shows on TV for a long time. Very, very. Good. And I was watching it like episodically every week when it was still on Nickelodeon. Was that four seasons? Three seasons. Uh, three seasons. Yeah. Three seasons. Uh, when it was on Nickelodeon, I was I was tuning in every week, and I was like telling people on the low, I was like, "Hey, yo, check this out. There's this cartoon on Nickelodeon." But it's legitimate. But it's good. legitimate. Like it's it's a cartoon, but it, it has some mad adult type themes in it yeah. uh, that make you think as as you're sitting here watching this with your kid, you're like, oh shit, that's dope. Yeah. And I was telling people like, yo, Avatar's a shit. And then cut to a few years later, everybody else caught on that, oh yeah, Avatar is the shit. Right. And then everybody's like, Oh yeah, da 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 da. Right. I don't know. Maybe I'm just that guy. No, nah, you that's that's why you're that's why we're doing this podcast because you right. have got good taste. You're right. At least interesting taste. Yeah. You I, I like you've good. never had boring taste. Oh never that. Never can't, yeah. can't be. Yo, Spider Man just made a billion dollars. Yes, I heard that. Good I didn't believe do you believe that shit? I know, it's crazy. It like, should, because it's a really good well, movie. Yeah, yeah, but like they made all those other Spider Man movies and none of those made a billion dollars worldwide. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I guess not. That's that that's why I was like, wait, what? Yeah, that's why the, like, the, the the number wasn't so much that Spider Man made a billion dollars. It was that no previous Spider Man movie to this point had made a billion dollars. It's not even Homecoming, huh? That's weird, right? Yeah, they, uh, I feel like we should fact check that because that, that doesn't seem right. That seems weird. I read the same news though, that and weird. also uh, Avengers <clears throat> Endgame 
surpassed yeah, finally. Avatar. I, and I knew it would. Yeah. I knew it would. It, it <laughs> was, like, we're going to keep this in theaters so, so, yeah. for so long. Solely to, I feel like they kept it in theaters solely to do that. Yes, they did. And good on Cameron for being like, cheers. He's like, I got four movies coming out. So He's just, like, yo, just fuck chill. with me. Just fuck, fuck with me. Come, with me. At, come, come at, at me, bro. bro. Come at me. Come at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, but not adjusted for inflation, by the way. Oh, oh. The reigning champion. Oh. Adjusted for uh, inflation is Gone with the Wind. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Everybody and their grandma saw Gone with the Wind back in the day. Yeah, you're right. So if you adjust that to today's ticket prices, uh-huh. it, I'm it, pretty it sure it blows yeah, everything, everything else. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. Do you ever see Gone with the Wind? Yeah. Do you, what do you remember from it? Racism. <laughs> 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 You're not wrong. racism in really nice backdrops. <laughs> Painted backdrops. Painted backdrops. Yeah, I remember being like, "That's yeah. a really nice backdrop." That is fake as fuck. Yeah, <clears throat> Gone with the Wind. I remember it being fucking long as shit. Yeah, four hours. Yeah, no, it's super long. It's like Avengers Endgame long. <laughs> uh, to real quick, get some other news, and then we'll do the Marvel stuff from San Diego, San Diego Comic Con. Uh, so Nintendo finally kind of like address the Joy-Con issue. Somebody sued them. I think they were in the process of setting up that class action lawsuit, yeah. Somebody was trying to sue them. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, oh, 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 oh. So now if you go to the Nintendo website... You can get them for free now. Yeah, they'll basically like... They'll yeah. fix them for free. I bet you it's paper shipping. But Before, they, I, what I read is that they will... They will, <coughs> they will replace you your... coffee today. Oh what is going on? I don't know, dude. They, they will replace it. And if you had to spend money to get it replaced, they'll refund you that money. Yes. So they will not refund me, who just bought new no, ones. No, no, you're you're fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, so that, bro. That's, shouldn't have bought new ones. Yeah, shouldn't have bought new <laughs> ones. Shouldn't have bought new ones. Should not have bought new ones. Should have just dealt with it for. Uh, that was. It's been about months. six months. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have Joy Cons that are drifting. <clears throat> You can go to the Nintendo you, website. And they will replace them for you. Previously, if you went to the Nintendo website, it would send you like a troubleshooting section. Yeah, and, you, no. and then it was like a, a big well, runaround I, circle type thing. Like, and finally, you could like figure out the info. What was crazy is that like the day that I read that somebody was bringing this class action lawsuit against them, the very next day, I read that they were offering this. Yeah. So, I mean, they, I guess they heard. They were like, yo, this is going to affect our bottom line. Let's just do it right now and right. get it over with. Uh, <clears throat> so there's some... Uh, Stuff coming out with Disney Plus. If you want to hear real quick what's going to be opening on Disney Plus, uh, so Marvel's going to have Captain Marvel, Iron Man, Iron Man Three, and Thor: The Dark World. Everything from Pixar is going to be on the Disney Plus uh, new show. What is that? That comes out on November twelfth, and it's going to be seven dollars a month or seventy dollars a year. Fuck you! I know, crazy, right? Uh, Star Wars episodes one through seven, so not including. The prequels? The pre- no, 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 the prequels are in there. No, no, not including uh, The Last Jedi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. that one's probably still on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, Rogue it One's going to be on there. I actually uh, watched it this week. A ton of Disney stuff 101 Dalmatians, Goofy Movie, Extremely Goofy Movie, Bambi, Born in China, Fantasia, Free Solo, Frozen. So the canon of their animation plus yes. these, these new properties else. they've acquired. Yes. Uh, launch Day shows, Earth <clears> Live, <throat> Encore, Goof Troop, that kind of stuff. Goof Troop. Star Wars classic. Rebels. Clone Wars is going to be on there. Wicked Tuna is going to be on there. Wicked Tuna. And The Mandalorian, mm-hmm. the Star Wars property. That's, you said November? Yes, November 12th. So that's going to be on there. The World According to Jeff Goldblum. Huh? <laughs> a new show is going to open up on, on that. On Disney? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. You're not going to pay for it. No. It might be I'm included not. in one of no. my family members' packages. So yeah. we, we somebody, may, I think somebody in your family is going to yeah. gift it to somebody in your family, and then yeah. all of you guys will just use it. Yeah, seventy bucks a month, 70 or bucks seventy bucks a year, a year. seven dollars a month. But I, I feel like uh, the way the way that I view stuff, I don't really think it's necessary. Yes. I, I, I really only pay for one streaming service, and it's Netflix, and it's because I've been with them since their like inception right. when they were like back, but, be, back before t- back when it was seven dollars. Yeah, yeah. now, now now it's in double it's in double digits now. It's like fourteen, I think twelve. 12, yeah. Um, Which is still not bad. Still if you're only bad. paying for one thing, it's not bad. Right. If you're paying for like five Multiple different things, you're paying for Amazon right. and Hulu. And, not doing that. Yeah. Not yeah. doing that. Not that's, too- that's absurd. Um, there are other ways to go about getting that content that doesn't require you to, you know, break your pockets. Yes. And uh, 
<laughs> I'm all for not breaking my pockets. Yes. Let's do uh let's do Marvel. Uh Are what do you ready? want to start, man? Marvel was Marvel was huge. Marvel was I mean they they were the they were arguably the biggest announcement at Comic Con this year. Yeah. Arguably. Um so we got phase four. We, we we got everything in phase four. Let's just do phase four right now. We got everything in phase four and some things that even weren't in phase four. Yeah. So we got Black Widow. That's the first movie coming out, right. part of phase four, May 1st, 2020. Right. We got the Taskmaster. Master. Oh, Jesus Christ. Taskmaster uh-huh, is the yeah. villain. Right? Yeah. And uh, our boy Harbor is going to be in it. Yeah. And Harbor is not apparently playing the test. No, he's he's playing um I forget the name of the character. Red he's, Guardian. Yeah, basically he's like um the Russian Captain America. Russian super spy. Yeah. Um no, yeah, so uh, that'd be cool, I guess. Yelena Belova is playing uh basically <coughs> the Black Widow successor right. in the Red Room. Yeah. And you were super excited about this. No, I'm not. I'm so not. But they they did give you um, the timeline of when it uh, is supposed to go. It happens between the events of Civil War and Infinity War or Endgame. Uh, I think it's Infinity War. Yeah, I it think happens between uh, the. I the heard Ed- Winter Soldier and Civil War. That's what I heard. I and I heard the I heard it was um, Civil War and Infinity, but it. Did we read about the Taskmaster from the Marvel Encyclopedia book? Not recently, but I don't know. You, you've you been playing the Spider-Man game. Right. I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. I that might, When we get to what we into, if we get there this week. Because uh, we may not. we got a lot of news. Uh, so the Taskmaster <coughs> has a unique ability to duplicate any physical movements he's seen, something he calls photographic reflexes, though at the cost of his own memories. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. So he loses memories. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he used his new skill to transform himself into a highly dangerous villain, a match even for the Avengers. His power is that he can copy other people's movements, regardless of complexity, after watching them once. Oh, I have gotten there. Yeah, I have done it in Spider-Man, because he had me run around and find a whole bunch of stuff, and he was, and basically it was like, now I know all of your movements. Yeah, got it. You won't actually fight him till the latter part. He's going to send you on a bunch of fetch it quests, and yeah. then you do fight him uh when it's all said and done, what would it what would it take for you to be excited about this movie? Black Widow, man, I don't know, dude. I, I honestly, though, I feel like the time for for telling this story was in Phase One. Yeah, um, I so, don't know. I, I I'm not as I, I'm honestly generally not really that excited about this phase of Marvel. Phase Four, stuff. yeah. I'm not that like. There's only one movie that the two. There's two movies that 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 are coming that I'm actually excited for it, and that's Doctor Strange and Blade and Blade's not even going to be a uh, part of the, yeah. the phase it's just a standalone uh, thing well, hold on we'll get that in just a second so that's <laughs> May 1st 2020 Black Widow so we we have the, almost like almost a whole year before another Marvel thing yeah. which is kind of maybe a nice break I I I think for Marvel, yes, uh, but I think DC, like I, like we already said, like DC has, has they have so many properties on TV right now. Right, I think that may play to their benefit. If Marvel, if Marvel's on the shelf for a little bit, I think DC can can gain a little ground mm-hmm. with these properties now, um, especially since they don't they do such a good job of interweaving them. Right. Because um, the first Marvel TV show isn't coming until fall of 2020, which is Falcon, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. See, yeah. <laughs> so think, basically, yeah, it's a year without Marvel. I think, I think it, I think Marvel, I think Marvel will be fine because they've established themselves as the, you know the big uh, shark in the in the world. So it's not going to hurt their bottom line so much. But I feel like DC, if DC does it right, they could gain some ground and gain a, a, a pretty decent fan base. Not to, not to say that they don't already have a pretty exquisite and extensive fan base, right. but. I mean, they're kind of like all they have to do is make good stuff, and people will watch it because there's enough from the, from the comic base. And 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 to, to their credit, a lot of what they're doing, especially with the shows, aren't bad. Yeah, Swamp Thing is actually starting to take a real good turn for like, oh, this is actually fucking cool. Right. Um, I I liked Titans. A lot of people didn't. Titans was fine like for Titans. me. I had a few issues, but I mean, not everything can be perfect. Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol was fucking incredible. It was really good. Uh, like. I, I think Marvel has. Uh, excuse me. I think DC has been taking steps, at least in their in their sh- in their TV show uh, arena, to make themselves stand out. Right. In a way that Marvel hasn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
basically we, we had those Marvel shows on Netflix, the, the Daredevil and what, what have you, and Luke Cage, all that just to do a Defenders. Right. And even in the Defenders was, eh, meh. It was okay. It was okay. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> next up, November 6th, 2020, we have The Eternals. You're not psyched about that, though. Not, not, that, not terribly stoked. But... But because and only only because that the Eternals, um, the uh, what's the ones that they had their, they had their own TV show. Anson Mount was uh, Black Bolt. Um, oh God! <laughs> oh what, what what? Anson Mount from from Star Trek Discovery? Yes, I know you're gonna say it. And I'm like, oh yeah, that. Yeah. Um, well, it Selma was, Hayek. It was the one that they, that they set in uh, in Hawaii. Uh, what were they called? They live on the moon. Oh, oh, oh! Uh, in, Inhumans. The Inhumans. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. basically, I never saw it. That's why I was like drawing a blank there. So basically, the Eternals. This is why. This is why I'm kind of like meh because I feel like if you were if you're telling the story of the Eternals, you in a movie, you probably should have done the same thing to the Inhumans in a movie, right? Because the Eternals humanity and the inhumans are all offshoots okay they're, they're, they're basically humanity's uh, uh evolutionary tree split in these three different uh, uh branches and that's where we get these these people because basically the celestials like the all-powerful cosmic beings that basically created the universe they came to earth is that jeff goldblum's character grandmaster he might I don't. I don't know. He might be. Okay. He might be one of the celestials. celestials, but the celestials created the Eternals, created humanity, created the Inhumans. Because basically, the celestials were like these uh, universal gods that came to the Earth and started experimenting with the life forms on the planet, mm-hmm. and that's how we get the. Uh, Actually, we see you see an internal in in one of the Marvel movies, it, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes, right? that big guy that big, with yeah, who He's was huge. using yeah, it's like five that's stories a celestial. Tall. Yeah, and with without those characters, there would be no Marvel universe. There would be no humans. There wouldn't be any anything. Uh-huh. Like they came, they they basically jumped off everything that happened in the in the uh, in the cosmos. But what about God? I don't know what you're talking about. God, I don't know what you're talking about. Christianity. Oh, that, that Jesus. Um, I don't know if you've noticed about comic books, but there's very little to do with religion. <gasps> very little. I mean, unless you talk about like mutants and the, and that sort of thing. <laughs> so the encyclopedia says the Eternals, also known as the High Lords, were a small group of superhuman mutants whose lifespans were potentially unlimited. Their aging process Thus, was eternal. greatly slowed, and they could recover from injuries that would be fatal to normal humans. Thus, eternal. Yeah. This yeah. is Selma Hayek as a team leader, Ajax, Richard Madden as Icarus, Don Lee as Gilgamesh, Angelina Jolie as Thena. Brian Tyree Henry, who's from Atlanta, that yep. show Atlanta, yep. as uh, Fastos. <laughs> He's out of terror. Lauren terror. Ridloff, who I think is deaf in yep. real life, right? Yep. Uh, as Makari. Leah and I McHugh. think her character will be she's the first deaf character in the Marvel Universe. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Laura McHugh <clears throat> as Sprite and Kamal Nanjani as Kingo. No Keanu Reeves. No Keanu Reeves. No. No Millie Bobby Brown, which were rumors that they, they would that they were both going to be in there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I I, I want to be more excited about it, but uh, the the Eternals for a long time they've kind of just been like we live a long time and we don't want to be into we don't want to interfere with humanity's problems, right? You know because they've been around since the dawn of time. Are they indestructible? Basically, yeah. So how do you make that an interesting movie? That's my point. Yeah. Like, like I'm, I'm not excited about a lot of what this this Phase Four Marvel is. It, other uh, Black Panther two, I'll, I'm 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 on board for. Um, Doctor Strange two, I'm on board for. Right. And Blade, those are the three that I'm actually looking forward to seeing. You're not on board for Mr. Kim's convenience star Simi Liu as Shang Chi. Shang Chi in the Legend of the Ten Rings. But no, but I, I did see that. But I, and I'm excited that he got the role because I've been talking about Kim's convenience yes, on the I show, know. and. Th- I was like, "Whoa, yo, go ahead!" Because I think that show's Canadian. I didn't think he was. I, I didn't I think, think you he, told me that. Yeah, I didn't think he was like uh, an American household name enough to to warrant it. But I guess he's got good agents because, yeah. So this is coming out February twenty first, twenty twenty one. Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Yeah, which could be cool because of the villain. The Mandarin is the real, the real, the, the real, actual Mandarin. Yeah, which did. I think I was talking about it on the show maybe a couple of weeks ago. Yes. That little standalone thing with because Ben Kingsley plays the Mandarin in that last um, Iron, Iron Man, Man three. three. Yeah, 
but he's playing like a, a he's an actor portraying this actual person and in this little standalone thing that person comes and finds him in prison that, that t- I told you about this yeah right? yeah and, the and, actual Mandarin finds the fake Mandarin in right. prison Right, but you don't actually see the, the the real Mandarin. It's basically one of his operatives has has gone into this prison to interview the fake Mandarin, right? Um, and then um, inevitably just kidnaps him, okay. or at least you think he kidnaps yeah, him yeah. by the end. It, it's like fifteen, it's like a fifteen minute short, and it's Marvel. Yeah, um, I still haven't watched it every time. I, I, I did that it. podcast and was like, I need to watch that. And check it out. It's, I'm sure it's on YouTube. It, it, that's why I saw it. I, I, it was one of these rabbit hole things that I, I I pulled the thread on and went down. I was like, holy shit, they had a. It, it's it's basically like a post credit scene for Iron Man three that's not attached to anything. Right, it's fifteen minutes long. Fifteen minutes long. That's cool. It's fucking rad. Uh, so Tony Leung is playing the villain, the real Mandarin. Uh-huh. Uh, the film clearly alludes to the Mandarin's weapons, the, the, the Ten Rings, Legend of the Ten Rings yeah. in the comics. Yeah, uh, they each contain the spirit of an ancient warlord. The Ten Rings do. Right. Interesting. Uh, it's reasonable to assume that Shang Chi's origin will have been switched around. In the comics, he's the son of the crime lord Fu Manchu. Yep. <laughs> um, well, as we were saying, uh, <clears throat> there, there is a president that some shit is a little like. Ooh. But hopefully that will be adjusted, uh, uh, and he'll be the maybe the Mandarin's like son or heir or great grandson or something like that I'm, instead. I, I I really want to be excited about these tertiary secondary characters that Marvel's kind of like bringing into this phase but there's not one Avengers movie in this phase for no me. not one no and for me I feel like if they you're not take... gonna do a movie where you you know culminate in a bunch of these guys coming to be in the same frame right. but maybe maybe they're doing what you know what <laughs> the Iron Man movies did <clears throat> yeah. setting up what it, which you're, you're probably not wrong it's just because DC rushed Justice League all that DC, was rushed DC rushed man. Justice League for sure but I, I think what, what I'm saying is Shang Chi. A lot of people don't know who the fuck Shang Chi. No, is. he doesn't a lot even of have a whole page. He's got like a little a blur, tiny... and that's what I'm saying. When you don't have a whole page in the Marvel the Encyclopedia, et- the Eternals, like like also u- not a whole page. That's what I'm saying. They're using these tertiary properties to sort of, you know, what it feels like. It feels like a filler episode. Sure. That, that's what Phase Four feels like to me. It feels like a series of filler episodes until we announce Phase Five, where we'll we'll go back to making that shit that like people are going to be fired for. But don't you think Guardians of the Galaxy <clears throat> kind of felt like that at first? Like, why are we going into space? Here's these, these well, no. people that nobody's read these comics well, see, from. Guardian and... of the Galaxy, yes, initially did feel like that. But the way that they kind of button hooked it sure. into the Thanos story, it made all the sense in the world. Right. Because you were going to have to deal with space in some way because so many of these stones were scattered throughout the right. galaxy. So it, it, would, it, it was an easy fix to, to you. Basically, the Guardians of the Galaxy are the Avengers of space. Right. So that's what they did. They was like, let's let's put the Avengers in space and then tie the other Avengers to the Avengers in right. space, and that's how we got what we got. So did, do any of these movies link up to Kang the Conqueror in some way? I don't think so. Right. Okay. Like, I mean, I mean, maybe, but like, that's based what we on talked about based on my episode. knowledge of of these 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 properties and these characters right now, none of these kind of link up. Like, I like I, feel, I I'm dead I'm dead ass thinking that all of uh, Phase Four is filler. Right. It, it, it may it may step it may it may uh, set up some things later going down the road, but yeah, Black well, Widow she's dead. Yeah. So where are we going with that? Why, where, yeah, where, where's that gonna where's that gonna lead to? Where's the jumping off of that? Oh, we might see Harbor, uh, Russian character in one of the later joints yeah, yeah. down the line. Mm, yeah. Like does that does that character even have a full page? We're still gonna see it. We're definitely. I'm gonna see all of these films, but I'm not excited about yeah. any of them. Like I said, that, but you are the excited. announcement about Blade was was the exception. Yeah, but Blade, you are also excited about Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange, and Black Panther two. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, that's May seventh, twenty twenty one. Uh, MCU's first horror movie. Apparently, I heard this too. Yeah, I heard this too. An unexpected guest star, Elizabeth Olsen, Scarlet Witch. So what's interesting is that it's supposed to tie into the events of WandaVision. Right. I heard that. <clears throat> now, WandaVision, I think, comes out. Let me look here real quick. So this is May 7th. Mm-hmm. See, if WandaVision comes out spring of 2021, so, that's May. Yeah. I mean, March, yeah. April, May. So, that, that, so it'd be interesting if they had a TV show. That lined up with the, the movie. We lined up with the movie. It would be the first because they, they haven't done that. Yeah. They have yet to do that. Uh, before I forget, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season 7? Se- I think it's 6. 6? Six, 7? Six, 7. It's going to be their last season. Yeah. yeah. Which is strange because we all thought that season 5 was, was <laughs> the end. The way, the way it all kind of laid out, Colson dies and everybody. 
there's a new leader of the Shield team, or whatever. We thought that was it, and here we are in season six now, being like, what? So uh, very quickly, multiverse of madness. What does that mean to you? Anything? It, it means that we we can possibly have another foray into what um, uh, the Spider Man multiverse kind of alluded to, yeah. where there are these uh, other realms uh, that that are kind of like Earth but aren't. So we may I don't know. It, 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 but that could lead into Kang the Conqueror. Probably, because yeah, he, because he's basic time travel and all the different ver- multiverses of himself. But Doctor Strange is the is the exception. Like, but that's I feel like Doctor Strange is, Doctor Strange and Black Panther are the only two. They didn't announce Black Panther two. Oh, they uh, they oh oh that's right oh that's right. You know what I mean? That's that's true. So that's not even coming out in Phase Four. That's gonna be Phase Five. Black Panther two. See see that's like, this, this is what this is exactly yeah. what I'm saying. They're stuffing like they they got a year of off. Of, of telling two stories. Years. Wait, it'd be it'd be two and a half years before we get to Black Panther two. You think so? Yeah, twenty twenty two. So I think that this phase four is all the filler. There's gonna be like throwaway movies. Yeah, um, uh, I'm still excited for it. I'm also excited for November fifth, twenty twenty one, Thor: Love and Thunder. With um, what's her face taking up the the hammer now? Yes. So do you do you know anything about that yeah. that plot line? Yeah. Uh, Jane Luke? Foster. Yeah. In the comic books, becomes the the new Thor. Right. How? Um, uh, Thor. Something happened where Thor was was no longer worthy of the hammer. Yeah. What it was, I read that too, and the, the thing something, that I read, I, I don't remember. He he did something or said something, and he was no longer able to lift the hammer. <laughs> it's like when you get. It's like, sorry. <laughs> I was just thinking that's like when you get caught like being accused of like sexual harassment or something, uh, and you're like, you were no longer worthy. I, I, sensibly, I think it's something. Something happened where he was no longer worthy to, to wield the hammer, um, and he passed the the torch ostensibly to. What's crazy is in the comic books, Jane Foster, that character is dying of cancer, right? Um, so going through chemo, going through chemo. So like when she's not in, when she's not holding the hammer, she's you know sickly and weak and right. and dying basically. And then when she wields the hammer, she becomes you know. But the hammer's the also force. every time she picks up the camera, it's clearing <laughs> her body of all of the like chemotherapy, mm-hmm. and that's making her die faster, mm-hmm. which is interesting. It. So she dies faster every time she picks it up. It, she's strong when she holds it, but as soon as she puts it down, she's in a weaker state. It's it's interesting because um, it was right when Marvel was doing this the shake up with a lot of their properties where they made Captain America black. Um, um, well, Falcon became Captain America, and Falcon and Jane Foster end up having a relationship in the comics. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bet we don't get that. I doubt it. No, <laughs> but I I I dig it. I really like the artwork for this. Like if you've seen like the the whatever for the font Thor? for Thor yeah. Love and Thunder, it looks like what was that the animated show that was basically He Man but it was like a satire? It was like Zorm or you right, know, right, right, it right, looked right. like yes. that. Yeah. So this is again Taika Waititi. He's coming to do this. He's laying off of Akira. Thank God. <laughs> going to pick up this and this is 2021. So it looks like we're potentially not going to get Akira until 2022 or 2023 because mm. you got to. Because this come well, I guess he could be done filming this in 2020, but whatever. So this is uh, you know inspired by Jason Aaron's Mighty Thor run, and uh, yeah, we get might have to new read Thor. It. Might have to read it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm for it. So I'm that's for phase. It. So the, the um, that new Thor, uh, the one where Jane Foster is is Thor. It was, I read a bunch of it. I yeah, just, like because I read uh, I read a bunch of those initial books because it was. It was the first time in Marvel's history that they had done something like that. Right. And secondly, it cor- it actually lined up and corresponded with the um, Captain America uh, Falcon book. Right. So I was reading. I read a bunch of those early early books, and they're they're incredible. Um, they're they're really quite a lot of fun. Um, so uh, yeah, um, what's her face is uh, what's her name who played Jane Foster in the movies? Uh, uh, not Patrick. Uh, Natalie Portman. Portman. Yeah. I, I'm, interested like, see, I'm interested to see how yeah. how that fits on her. They'll, they'll make it fit good. She's, I'm interested. To see she's it. a solid actress for sure. Oh, she def- yeah. I mean, I mean, physically. Yeah, yeah. Because when she takes up the hammer, she she gains mass and like gets brawling. She gets. She looks like a like a female. So you're not excited for this movie? Not really. I see. I not am. Really. I, I was never like. It honestly, shakes it up a little bit. The Thor movies, other than that last one, weren't that great. Yeah. 
weren't that great. Like, that first one was meh. Meh. That second one was a dumpster fire. And yeah. the third one was the best of the three, but only because they added the Hulk and other characters to it. When it well, was they just, finally got the tone right when they, when, they, when, they, when it was just Thor to, to hold court in the movie, it was kind of like, ah, uh, fuck this guy. You didn't like his dyed eyebrows in the first movie? I, I didn't like that he sucked so much in the first movie. That's what I didn't like. Um, it wasn't until, like, that third one where they added Valkyrie, they added the Hulk, and you're like, this yeah. is awesome. This is awesome, yeah. Well, I feel like they got the same director. They get so, awesome. Yeah, you're right. And they're, it, awesome. and they're throwing a little wrench in. <laughs> they threw a wrench in for Endgame. They made him fat. Fat Thor. Fat Thor was awesome. That was awesome. You think we'll see Fat Thor again? That's the question, isn't it? I, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Yeah. I, I would love, love it if... I think if, they might address it. Like, yeah, and then yeah, I, I like, did oh, some, well, I had I to take out. that weight off because I was running around yeah, the galaxy exactly, with yeah. whatever. I, I, I feel like they if, I feel like they should have just leave him fat. Yeah. I feel like leave him fat. Leave him fat. I leave him a little fat. Maybe they'll leave the beard. Yeah. But they're not gonna they're not gonna show that gut again. I I, yeah. I want them to, so and one, it's already a joke that's already happened. That's true. But two, like, you know, I mean yeah, he's gonna work out for these. That's what that's why yeah. He worked out he, he wasn't actually fat for any of them. No, it's he was true. still that's you true. Know, so amongst all these movies in Phase 4, there's also Marvel TV shows coming to Disney+. Plus. Yep. Uh, fall of 2020, we have Falcon, Falcon and Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. There's WandaVision. And... WandaVision in spring of 2021, so that's almost a year later. There's one more, isn't Loki, there? Loki. Loki. That's right. One. And there's also Summer of 21, What If. Oh, that was the other one I was excited yeah, for. Yeah. Is that the TV show? I thought it was a movie. It's a TV show. It's a TV show. Okay, yeah, I'm excited yeah. for that. I have a quote on that. Let me pull that up in a second. Okay. Talk about why you're excited about that. Because uh, the What If... What if was a book that Marvel was, had produced for a, a good portion? I want to say seventies, eighties, and nineties. I don't even know if they still make it anymore. But it would, it, they were, it was basically these what if stories where they would say, you know, we take the the craziest things like what if Peter Parker never became Spider Man, or or what if Craven the Hunter became Spider Man? Like they would, they would take these really weird things to what if, right. and then the Watcher, uh, this this character, I, I think the Watcher is a Celestial. Yes. The Watcher is a celestial. He's also, I think, Stanley is talking to the Watchers at the end of. At the end of, yeah, he is yeah, that Guardians of the Galaxy. I want to say Guardians of the Galaxy. It's one but of yes, those movies, yeah. Where he's sitting, where he's standing around with a group of Watchers, yeah, yeah. So those cre- that's a post credit scene. If it's, you're wondering who those guys were, the the Watchers, and basically their job is to sort of watch what goes on in the universe yeah. and sort of like take note of it. And um, the, so Marvel had, and that was the that was the uh, the main character in these What If books, yeah. So it, the, it would be the watcher would would, would you would open the book and the watcher would be on the first panel and be like, here we are on Earth, whatever, and what if such and such happened out a different way? And then they would tell a story about, you know, Peter Parker didn't get bitten by that spider right. and all that. It, it was some of the dopest, so, um, like contingencies of, of what just, could have been this is shit you wanted to see right you know it, but it, it you didn't really want that to be canon no no you no, no, wanted no, no, to no. see what you happened you wanted to see what would have yeah. happened like like uh the one that i remember the from uh from reading was um what if craven the hunter had become spider-man and oh i've seen that one yes yeah and it's that it's, was one of the comics that i think my my grandmother had no shit yeah yeah at her and thing so those, those what if comics for me were, were some of the joy like Really joyous things. They they had some dope things in that. So I'm excited for that. I, I thought it was a, I thought it was a movie. I didn't know it was going to be like a uh, episodic show. That should do, be fun. Do you want some details? No, no, no. Too bad. No. Um. So the, it's supposed to explore the events of the first 23 movies. So each each of the what if episodes is supposed to take place in one of those movies or one of those timelines. I see. And so the quote from Kevin Feige is: <laughs> "Right now we're focusing on for the first season." everything you know about the 23 movies in the Infinity Saga and adding one twist to them and seeing how everything turns out different. That's fucking cool. That's cool that's shit, gonna be, right? That's, that's going to be cool. Uh, then they're also getting a Hawkeye TV show in fall of 2021. <laughs> oh, shoot some arrows. <laughs> Yay. Is that, is is, that is the old, one? Is old boy going to be in it? Of course he is. Of course. <laughs> so Daniel Brühl's coming back for Captain America... Or excuse me, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. He's the guy who played Zemo. Uh, he's got a comic accurate mask this time. <coughs> uh, Loki is the trickster god, right? And he's uh, they're literally they're showing taking, wh- and they're, they're, that from what I read, they're picking up exactly from where Loki disappears with the um, 
Tesseract. Space Stone. Yeah. In uh, in uh, Endgame. So if you, if you were watching Endgame, you're like, where did Loki <laughs> what go? To Loki? What would happen to Appa- him? Apparently, the show is going to deal yeah. with that. His, the logo is really interesting. So it's just his name, L O K I, and mm. each one of the letters is in a different material and in a different font, mm. sort of suggesting these different times, like the L different is space, different sp- space and time. Yeah, steel. Space you know, whatever. Uh, WandaVision, which is also coming out right around the time of... What was the other one we talked about? I, I've already whatever. forgot. Whatever. Um, to, uh, yeah, so WandaVision is coming around the time of Doctor Strange, mm-hmm. right? And that's going to have Captain Marvel's Monica Rambeau. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's going to be in that. Yeah. There's supposed to be 25 actors in total that are reprising their roles in Marvel's What If, including Paul Rudd, Natalie Portman, Michael B. Jordan, Samuel L. Jackson... Jeffrey Wright. So Ooh. we could. Oh wait, he's gonna be Killmonger. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Because if, if it's a what, what if, if story, yeah. yeah. So maybe you, you will get a little Black Panther before. Yeah. What if Killmonger was? I don't know. Or what? Or what if you know? Um, T'Chaka hadn't. What yeah. if T'Chaka had taken him back to Wakanda with him instead of leaving him here? In exactly. America? Yeah. Ooh, that's that one's gonna be interesting, right? Yeah. Right. Are these only gonna be an hour long? That would I be... hope so. Yeah, I hope so. You don't want to be two hours? No, I a two hour TV show? Yes. No, that's no. Movie. That's what I want. No, that's a movie. Yeah, <laughs> that's a movie. No, no. Uh, Give it. Don't try that shit. You saw how well it worked out for them. So this is. Oh, it's going to uh, the Hawkeye show is going to introduce the MCU's version of Kate Bishop. Yeah, Clint Barton's apprentice slash yeah. teammate in the comics. Yeah, she basically takes over for Hawkeye when he disappears. Yeah. So, Mahersha Ali. Uh huh. Was announced yeah, for Blade. Blade. How do you feel I was about a, that? A, a little disappointed, but also really kind of hopeful because I think he would. I think he can kill it. Yeah, he'll, he'll be kill great that. At it. Yeah, he'll kill it. I don't know. I don't know how much of a martial artist he is because Wesley was is an actual accomplished True. martial artist. Um, but uh, I think I think it's I think it's great. I would have. Personally, I would have loved to have seen Wesley reprise it. Yep, but that's it. Does he? He doesn't have to. I mean, he's an old man now. He's an old man. I mean, he's a little too old. He says it's all good though. That's yeah. his quote. Yeah, you it's read all, that about I, him? I I didn't, but I I, I think I, I I was I was starting to read an article where fans were upset that Wesley mm-hmm. wasn't, and basically Wesley just kind of quieted all that down, made me like chill. He says to all the daywalkers losing their minds right now, chillax. Although the news comes as a surprise, it's all good. Such is the business of entertainment. Mm. Much peace to the MCU crew. Always a fan. Honor, honor and respect to Grandmaster Stan. Congratulations to Salam and Mahershala Ali, a beautiful and talented artist whose expressions I look forward to experiencing for many years to come. In Sala, we will someday work together. Uh, most importantly to my loyal fans, the incredible outpouring of love is overwhelming. I am grateful for the never-ending support. So, not fret, not worry. It's not the end of the world, <coughs> end of the story. Welcome to the Daywalker click. That's what's up. I think he's gunning for, like... what? Make him Dracula. Mm, I think I think we'll see him. Yeah, I think so, I too. think we'll see him. And it would be disappointing not to. I think we'll see him. He may... He may, you know, be like uh, Marshala's Whistler. Right. You know. Who, there you go. Who knows? He could be anybody. <laughs> just, it would be, yeah. Um, but, yeah. I, I think that's about it for Marvel. It? Yeah, I don't I don't think I have anything else uh, to do with Marvel anyway. Um, I do have a comment. And uh, I do have some presents here. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, your, your birthday present finally came in. I finally got your... For, uh, having gone through some stuff at the top of this month, and I know I know it's almost the end of July, so your birthday month is pretty much on the back burner. But I finally got it's your still president. my birthday month though. I finally got your president. Um, so I mean, I don't know if you want to unwrap it now and, and, uh, and describe describe well, what it is. I, you gave me one piece, and yeah, I walked in and gave you one piece. And and what did you, what did you ask me? Is, is this a, a taint tickler? <laughs> a taint tickler? Is this a uh, long long dildo? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it could be either of those if you want. I mean, look, it's a little long, me. but the perfect girth for me. <laughs> and then you handed me this other piece, and then yeah. I. You put two and two together. God, that should that sounds so loud here at Comic Con. Opening this, yeah, in front sure. of everybody. And it is a lightsaber hilt. <laughs> this makes this makes windows. I don't know. I honestly don't know. What, like, I don't know what color it is. I don't. I haven't put it together yet. No, I haven't put it together yet. Uh, you, I think, 
I think there's th- that one is is the premium one. No, you got to take that bottom part off, and then that little there's a screw, and I hope that's still in there. That that you uh, that you you put that you slot that in there, and then you use that little Allen key to tighten it down. Um, Do you know what color it is? I, I, I like I said, I don't know. I, I basically I gave you the premium one. That one I think has sound to it as well. Yes. Let me see it. Let me see it. Okay, you see it. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold you. you fiddle I'll, with this I'll, for a I'll second. figure it out, and then uh, I'm gonna show you what my brother got me because uh, that's what I got for myself. Oh, uh, nice. So you got a red one. I got I. I didn't. Okay, so this is what I did. I didn't buy any. Like I, I didn't specifically choose any of them. I basically went to the website and got a mystery box. Oh, nice. And so they, and so for like seventy five bucks, they put two random lightsabers in the box, and they mailed them to me. Nice. So I, when I pulled them out, I, I, I was like, well, I, I was going to give you the option of choosing which one to have. Yeah. But one of them had a label on it of being a premium item. That, is that a, a Kira jacket? It is. That's fucking cool. Yeah. Is that what Bo got you? Yeah, but yeah. Let me see the back. I thought it this is. came from you at first. So that's fucking cool. Because this just came in the mail. There's no. Oh, like, it just came in. It just yeah. came. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh man, this is what he got me. That's fucking cool. Yeah, pretty cool, right? Yeah. I uh, haven't worn it because it's like 95 degrees here. Yeah, in that's, New York. It's inappropriate it's right cool. now. I like but. it. So now, now we are officially outfitted for. Whenever the Akira movie comes out, we want to boycott it. <laughs> and whenever the next Star Wars movie comes out, we can bring our lightsabers to the movie theater. I probably should have read that thing. Oh, that's what it is. I think you got to pull this that thing out. This yeah. thing out. We'll figure it out. It's a contact thing. But uh, I have two comments. Just a little loving early in the morning. Comments. One from Mary Kirstein. Hey, lady nerd one. This What's one might be a little old, but she talks about Stranger Things. Did I read well, this already? That's, that, that was last week's episode. So okay, good. Not... Sorry, I read this. We read this lesson. So edit that out. Uh, this one comes from Sean Calloway. What's he up to? He says, Jonathan Brandis killed himself. He was the kid from Never Ending Story 2. Yeah. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Wow. Bummer. I did not know that. Yeah. Because he, he had a pretty decent career, too. He was on that uh, Sequest show. Sequest, yeah. I remember reading about it. I don't remember what the details Killed were. Killed himself, huh? I don't know if it was drugs. I don't know if it was just depression. I think it was just depression. Yeah, I, think I think he think was so just, too. like, very, very depressed and didn't have the support that he needed and uh, had been a child actor for a long a time. A while. A hot minute. Uh, he goes on. He says, Bastian's <laughs> father was also the senator in Deadwood. Is that true? I, I think just he watched, might be. I just watched that movie, the Deadwood movie with Laura. Oh, word? Yeah. Isn't it good? I, I, I mean, yeah, it's good. I think I would have enjoyed it more had I just seen, you know, the Deadwood show. It had been about three, four, five, six years since I'd seen Deadwood. Hmm. Uh, so it's not that I didn't understand what was going on. I think it just kind of had a muted effect on me. But it was good. Laura liked it a lot. Uh, Sean Calloway says, In Stranger Things, the movies playing at the theater were Back to the Future, huh. Daryl, and Cocoon. Daryl. And so we talked about the kid in uh, in Basically Never Ending Story. He's the kid from Daryl. And he's also the kid in Cocoon. That's tr- Oh, wow. Wow. Right? Wow. That's a through line that yeah, they... Yeah. That, oh, wow. Look at that. So he's making those connections for us. Uh, two movies Barrett Oliver starred. Oh, yeah. I'm ready. He goes on. And he got the uh, additional <laughs> shout out for the Never Ending Story duet, which I fucking loved and sang along like a re... I'm not going to read that. Lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say that no more, Kelly. Can't, yeah, Can't say that this no is more, This is a PC. Bro. This is a PC <laughs> podcast. <laughs> what we into is political correctness. Uh, fun fact, Winona Ryder's first movie was Lucas in 1985, which Lucas. is also the year Stranger Things takes place. I don't remember that movie. Lucas is great. Uh, Winona Ryder, it's got Corey Haim, I want to say. One of the Corys, eh? Yeah. And he plays, Elmer. he's actually really good in it, and he plays like kind of a slow, let's see here, let's see, I'll pull it up here. This is the movie. N- Lucas, no, that's there must be another Lucas. Anyways, it's great. It's an '80s movie. It's kind of like Pretty in Pink in some ways. Oh, uh, okay. Like he plays like it's basically Rudy before Rudy. Like oh. he wants to be like an athletic dude, and so they put him on the team, and he just gets creamed. <laughs> Glasses get broken. It's really sad. He doesn't kill bugs. Give me that wrench I just gave. Oh, it's uh, right here. Ba 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 da. So we'll have to do another week with uh, what we into because we're we're out of time for the most part. 
right. Unless there's anything you want to drop. Um, I real had quick. One what was thing, the one thing that you were that I had you were one into? One thing that I, I, well, there was actually two things that really kind of took over at the end of this week. It was uh, I finished up Fleabag. Yes, um, I highly recommend that. That's that's exceptionally right. Yeah, writing excellent. on that show is exquisite. I got Euphoria to watch. I got Fleabag to watch. Fleabag for sure. And then I just started this new one with Katie Sackoff as the lead called uh, Another Life. Yes. It's a space one. Yes. Um, it's interesting, but I, I've had, I've, I have I issues with it. it. I watched it last night, man. The, how many? Just the first episode? Just the first one. I, it's interesting, but I have, I have issues with it's it. It's not good. You don't think so? No. No, it's not good. Um... I'm I'm about halfway through the season at this point, so I'm gonna I I like the premise I like where it's going and I'm kind of interested to see where this mystery of the object it, it's basically like for lack of a better t- it's like uh, if like the day the Earth stood still yeah basically like um, this thing shows up on the planet we don't know it's an it's alien in its origin we don't know what it does or, or why it's here and it just it set it's setting up and like putting out a, a signal and then we send people into space to track down where it originated from and setup is cool the premise and setup are, are really cool but they do some stuff in the writing and in the in the execution of it i'm like what it's super juvenile yeah the that... first episode they're on like a ship and there's like a mutiny after like two, two minutes seconds. yeah she um, made like one decision katie Sackoff, katie Sackoff who yeah. basically you, she she was starbuck in the um the the remake of the Battlestar, Battlestar Galactica. Galactica. She's also She's has Starbuck. some terrible terrible sexist lines in the new Riddick movie. Oh right, and they yeah. just announced an, a, Another, a new Riddick movie, yeah. Furiosa or whatever. Yeah, it's, Fur- um, it's it's the place where he, where that character is from. Yeah, um, which that that looks great. I love the Riddick movies. I do too. But um, but, but some not... of that that sexist shit in that that Riddick movie, the most I mean, recent one. I mean, there's a lot of sexist shit in that Riddick yeah, movie. Yeah, a lot for being. So I hope uh, I hope with the new movie that they can get on the right side of that, you know, because because it's not that stuff's not aging well. No, and I'll, it's not. I'll give it a, a slight pass in a sense of like, well, that was before, and Vin, but Vin Diesel, don't lean into the sexism, man. You need to get away from. Well, it's interesting. You he's always had strong because, women. Uh, they, they've always been strong women in those movies. Do you know, uh, but like, well, this, I'm going to be balls deep and so and so blah blah blah. This, this speaks to something that Quentin Tarantino got kind of pulled on, like. Uh, a reporter asked him about uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and right. why Margot Robbie's character doesn't really speak, right? Um, or was underutilized, basically. And he and he kind of like sloughed it off. He kind of gave the the question a brush off, but it right. it, it plays into what we, what you're just saying there is about like leaning into or not leaning into that kind of tropisms. Um, and I think I think our boy I think Quentin's definitely guilty of that kind of shit. Yeah, um, I have a for next week. We're gonna do um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. We're gonna go see that right. and review that for next week. Uh, but I have a, a a really good interview with Quentin Tarantino about the whole incident that happened with uh, oh my god uh, Uma Thurman. What in, incident? In Kill Bill 2, uh-huh. there's that moment where she's like riding that car, that really small car, yeah. and she's got like her sword in the back. Yeah. She ends up crashing that car while filming it. And she was told by Tarantino, well, I'll go into it for next week, but she was told by Tarantino, this is safe, this is safe, and she gets into an accident, and it really messes up her, her leg and all these different things. This came out right around the time of the Me Too movement with Harvey Weinstein. Uh-huh. And so a lot of people for really took that article and used it kind of to show that like these kind of male auteurs, these filmmakers are kind of sexist and just do what they want and don't care and he got kind of some slack from that and he responds in another interview about that information and so it's sort of it's interesting what do you I'll, say i'll talk about okay all i right, mean well, we'll talk about it next week but but yeah all that's, right all right for sure because we'll, right. we'll, we'll link that into tarantino um which I'm, I'm excited for his new movie it's supposed to be interesting and and uh affectionate and funny hmm so we'll see how it goes. Okay. The thing, I, the one thing I was into mostly this week, because you know, like I said earlier, my wife had surgery. She's she's doing great. She, her recovery is doing well. Uh, yeah, I, I I remember the day she came home from the hospital. I, I I was here and I I I wanted to give her so much shit because she looked like 
She looked like uh, she's wearing like her uh, that protective headgear to protect her yes. head or whatever. It she, looks like like she a, wrestler. Like a wrestler yeah. who who lost like <laughs> all, all the matches. Now's an appropriate time to give her. She shit. looked like like a wrestler that lo- lost all the matches, and I just didn't have the heart to to give her <laughs> shit that day because she looked she was just so tired. Like I was like, oh baby. You look. You lost all your wrestling matches at state. <laughs> she was hurting. She did not. She didn't research the recovery <coughs> oh. process, so it was a bit of a surprise. Uh-huh. But she's doing okay. One of the things, though, that was the biggest surprise was that she can't fly with us to Florida. What do you mean? She has to take a train. Are you serious? Yeah, because she was. It getting, affects the pressure. The pressure in, in her ear. Yeah, exactly. So oh, she no has shit. to. She has to get on a train <laughs> the day before we leave. <laughs> and it's a twenty-four. <laughs> meet you down there it's a 24 hour train ride wow there and back wow so wow okay because she can't fly for six weeks wow <laughs> so had we no known research. that we could have taken her ticket and given it to you but we didn't know until but i think so what, you, get, what are you going to do what, you guys get it refunded i think so she'll have a doctor's excuse so maybe they'll <laughs> refund it i don't know <laughs> uh, but the only thing I did, because I was in the hospital a lot with her, and I was in cabs a lot, because she couldn't ride the subway for the first two days, also because of the, the pressure. Because you know how when you go on the subway, sometimes you go underground, and the pressure changes and your ear pops? That's no, never happened to you. It <coughs> happens. Trust me, no, pay attention. Uh, <coughs> but I was playing Final Fantasy VII, not the remake that hasn't come out yet, on Switch, and it's great. It is. I was playing a little bit of it the other day when the yeah. girls were home. I'm like 20 hours into it. Wow. I'm like level 41. I'm like, because you know what? It, it has that thing where you can press a button and it speeds up the battles. Yeah. <laughs> so which helps enormously. It's just fun. It's just a really fun game. But I took a couple notes on it, just mental notes. The first part in Midgar, which is the remake, is supposed to be entirely set in that city of Midgar, right? right. The the remake is just in that in that city. Just the first first installment, just episode one of this remake. It's not the whole Wait. game. <clears throat> oh, so we're, we're getting episodic? Oh, you didn't know this. No. Yes, yes. I getting... thought the remake was we're getting the entire game. No, and it's, no. no. It's episodic releases, and they oh, haven't wow. said how many. So just oh, that wow. first section, just this game, the remake, right. is that section in that city, which takes about five to six hours uh-huh. of playtime. And it's incredibly linear. Like, you're not, you're not really given a lot of yeah, chances no, to branch you're, off. You're basically running down staircases and through... Yeah spaces yeah that's why if you watch that preview there's nothing outside really it's all like in a city setting Mm. it's all in some kind of an industrial setting uh (coughs) i still think it could be good because that's one of the best parts in the game well that's yeah the city is i thought i i'm 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 more excited about it now that you they're getting these episodic release because they could basically do whatever now yeah so I think that they're going to definitely do one in the city. Then they'll probably do another one in the open world part until you get to... <laughs> maybe they'll take it all the way to where Eris dies. Remember, right. she dies at that one point. And then, they'll, then maybe the third one will be the final battle to get to Sephiroth. Right. And just, you know, defeat him. Uh, it's good. I like it a lot, man. I And it's not so much the story. The story is, I mean, the story is really good. And it, 20 years ago, the story was fantastical. It's about... Shinra, this company that was sucking the life force of the Earth. Out of the planet, right. And the planet was collapsing. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Now, it's oddly legitimately, yeah. appropriate. Yeah. I tried to play it again post-9-11, and you're a terrorist group at the beginning of the game yep. called Avalanche, and you're blowing up buildings. And I remember trying to play it then and thinking, they just, they, you know... That, this is in appropes. Not, not in appropes, just like, it just didn't seem right. Like, it seemed like short-sighted in that mm-hmm. sense. Like, you're not really talking about how all the different innocent people that died in these explosions but now that we come full circle and we're back to the world being destroyed and going also there's terrorist attacks in that show years and years year and years year and year, years. years and years uh because basically once the world starts falling apart like people are just trying to get any resources. kind of attention they yep. can and resources they can so they start doing terrorist attacks uh it's yeah, it's 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 a weird game to play mm. in 2019 versus 1996. Mm. I actually went back to Red Dead this uh, this week. Yeah, that was the one game that I played. Yeah, how was that? It's better. The they you're talking about the online component. Yeah. That's what you told me. Yeah, yeah. They they've sussed out a lot of what was um, problematic about it, it early on. Um, it it's just one of those games where like. It's so easy to get immersed, right? Like, you're like you, you start one thing and then you end up kind of like meandering off the beaten path, and 
then I mean I, I knocked down a, a legendary animal just on the off chance that I was in the area and he cool showed up you know and I was like oh oh they have legendary an- animals in the uh, online point that's awesome okay yeah, it's uh it's good yeah. and they they're allowing you to sort of like craft your online experience like if you're you know into like collecting and herbal stuff um Am I? you know if you're if you're like more about the bounties that you can, you can i've always you, you know, know this about me I've, about I've always said my favorite thing about video games <clears throat> is collecting herbs i love it i, I don't believe you've ever said my that. favorite the um, witcher 3 give me some give me some flowers well, to that collect was, that shit was necessary because you needed Red Dead that redemption stuff to, i'll go around and get those you needed to you needed to do that stuff in the witcher to, because it helped with Concoctions and potions and the way I have you. hate it. I hate it so much in video games. I I enjoy it. It it it's it's one of those things, especially when you're dealing with like an open world. It, it helps to, at least for me, to immerse. It, it helps me with the with the with the belief of immersion. Like I'm like, oh yeah, I would have to, you know, collect X amount of herbs to make this potion to then do this, so I can kill that and get collected. It it it, it makes sense to me in the in the um, primordial way of like going through a, a game like that. Yeah, I guess I could I could dig it in like one game, but every game was doing it for a while. Mm. Every game was like, oh, there's some things on the ground. You got to collect them as you move through the planets. Anyways, uh, this is what we into. I'm your host, Lauren Style, and I'm your boy, Rob Karma Robinson. Thank you for my birthday gift. It's awesome. Thank you, Bo, my brother, for the Akira jacket. It's awesome. True story. Uh, You're welcome, brother. We'll be coming back next week with Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. We are on Facebook at What We Into. We you can send us an email, What We Into at Gmail dot com. Please do some comments. Please do. Uh, you can throw us a buck at Patreon dot com slash What We Into. Watch movies. We watch movies and we thank you. And uh, we play video games. We thank you because you help us do yeah. that. So if you want us to watch something, send us a quick email yeah or if, this, or if there's something that you've heard us talk about that you're like you know what you guys would probably like this please feel free to suggest it we're always looking for for new um and comparable nerd shit yeah we want to hear from you if you're out there across the country across the world and you want to send us an email just saying hey this is where i'm at this is who i am send it please all right peace peace